It's senior night at Arthur W. Hyatt Stadium in Skinny Atlas, New York, as the Lakers prepare to take on the Eagles of the Institute of Technology at Syracuse Central. Alongside Michael Fernari, I'm Brandon Ross, and Skinny Atlas has been on a roll lately, a 4-0 start, and all of it's behind the arm of Pat Ackler. Absolutely, Ackler is one of the best players in the state of New York. In fact, last year he was the Class C State Player of the Year, one of the best quarterbacks out there, and he has really been showing out this season. And Hackler's been showing out, on the stats show it. Plenty of passing touchdowns. He gets done on the defensive side of the ball as well, but he's got a little bit of help. Sometimes the passing game isn't really there for the Lakers, and Ari Boney, Ari Bo Ari Boney rather, just picks up the slack. Yeah, he played an outstanding game yesterday. It showed up on the stat sheet, but it showed up even more. I was at last week's game calling it for this very network, and he absolutely imposed his will all over Bishop Ludden last week. He was unstoppable in the run game. He made his mark on defense, and he was really very critical in pass protection as well. Ari Boney, it, Ari Boney in that game for the Lakers. A solid performance, to say the least. 16 carries, 121 yards, two touchdowns on the ground. Had a couple of receptions there as well. And they're going against a ITC team that definitely doesn't have that level of prominence at 0-4. Absolutely not. Now, Bishop Ludden had a very tough time last week here in Skinny Atlas. They lost 35 to nothing. And unfortunately, they lost to this team. I mean, they actually narrowly beat the team that they're going to be playing today. Isn't that right, Brandon? That's for sure. And now, quickly, going into this contest, the ITC Eagles still looking for that first win. Big challenge in Skinny Atlas's turf on senior night. What do you think the key is for them if they want to just try to stay competitive and possibly upset the Lakers? Well, last week we saw it. Um, Bishop Ludden had kind of a similar formula as the underdog going into this game. And at that game, actually, things were very slow early on. Pat Hackler threw an early pick, and there were really very few points scored by that prolific Skinny Atlas offense. However, Bishop Ludden was not able to take advantage of those early opportunities, and they found themselves down 14 to nothing early, despite really not playing too bad of a football game. If they want to stay in this game tonight, they are not going to be. Able, they cannot let Skinny Atlas get off to a fast start, and they need to get some points on the board early. The Eagles trying to take down the Lakers in their turf on senior night as the Lakers have taken the field here in Skinny Atlas, New York at Arthur W. Hyatt Stadium. When we come back after the national anthem, some high school football here in Section 3. You're listening to Lakers on CNY Stream.
Welcome back to some high school football at Arthur W. Hyatt Stadium. Again, the Lakers of Skinny Atlas taking on the IT Syracuse Central Eagles. The Lakers have won the toss and elected to defer, and so the Eagles will be receiving to start this one out. And Michael, obviously, you talked in the pregame a little bit about what ITC needs to do to stay in this ballgame. Reiterate that for the fans just joining us. Well, they've got a young quarterback, not actually a young quarterback. He just looks young because he's not exactly the biggest guy out there on the field. Tavon Ratchford, he needs to get into a rhythm early. Something that doomed Bishop Ludden last week in their game was that on third and long, they just had nothing going in the way of the passing game. And their offense was very, very predictable, and they ran right into the skinny Atlas blitzes. Now, one of the things that will probably be a key today is that the Eagles of ITC need to be able to beat the blitz, and they need to be able to get into, the, into third and short. And as Skinny Atlas getting ready to kick this one off, it'll be kicked off on the 40-yard line from the near hash. Nick Wamp, as always, set to kick it off for the Lakers. And two men back to receive for ITC. Wamp sets up 12 yards back, getting ready to boot this one off. The whistle blows and football is underway here in Skinny Atlas. Womp with a squib kick up on the near side and it's picked up on the 30 yard line. It's broken out to about the 35 where a swarm of defenders take down the returner and that's J.P. Chuitongi in to return. And so ITC getting ready to start this drive from their own 34 yard line. A solid return after the short kick and they have good field position. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the, how the play calling comes out here. Now, last week, Bishop Ludden attempted to kind of run at the Skinny Atlas defense with a lot of run plays right up the gut, and it got them absolutely nowhere. We'll see if, how creative this play calling scheme is going to be for um, ITC. Tavon Ratchford, the quarterback in the shotgun. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side, a running back at his hip. Chuitongi goes in motion. Ratchford takes the snap, rolling to his right. And he's going to get sworn by a pack of defenders. And he breaks through for a gain of about two or three. But he's brought down Jack Carlisle leading on that tackle for Skinny Atlas. I think that's very smart. You see early on they got him in a moving pocket. Now he ended up keeping the ball. But that was intended to be a rollout pass play. And I think that's a bright move. Skinny Atlas has a strong front seven and they love to blitz. And I think it's a very smart move. If you've got a smaller quarterback, if you're not as confident in his arm, it's a good thing to get him away from some of those rushers. Same set here for the Eagles. Tavon Ratchford in the pocket from the shotgun. He takes the snap, hands it off up the middle and met at the line of scrimmage by a swarm of defenders there, Richard Alexander. That's going to be a little bit of a loss possibly there for the Eagles. At the best, that's a no-gain situation. It'll be a third and medium here for ITC. That was an interesting one because he was met very early on in that play, but he kept fighting. He didn't exactly make much forward progress, but he made a lot of lateral progress on that play. He fought for about a good five yards of lateral movement. Not that that gets the Eagles much. Third down and six coming up for ITC. 10 minutes and 35 seconds on the clock. Still no score here in the first quarter of play. Two receivers on the near side, two to the far side. It'll be a shotgun, looks like the pistol formation here. Instead, Alexander sets up to the left hip of Ratchford. Ratchford takes the shotgun snap, hands it off to Alexander, and he's immediately met by a pack of defenders for Skinny Atlas. Jimmy Libertor leading on that tackle, and it'll be a fourth and medium, and the Eagles have to drive, have to punt on the three and out. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, it's something that you sometimes see in high school football with teams that are a little less likely and willing to pass. And right there, you see th a third and long situation and a run straight up the middle. That's something that a lot of teams have struggled with against Skinny Atlas, that kind of uh, feeling like you're handcuffed a little bit in your play calling. We'll see if that continues tonight. Chewy Tongi on to punt for the Eagles. Nick Wap back to return. That one's kicked end over end, lands at about the 31. It's going to take a short bounce. Watts fails to field it, and it's going to be recovered by the Eagles. Whoa. Albert Scipio lands on top of it after Wop can't handle the punt. And with 9.32 in this first quarter, after a three and out, the Eagles recover the muff punt and have possession inside the 30. 
Very, very bizarre play there from Nick Womp. There really was no reason to even attempt to field that ball. It was comfortably bouncing around at the 30-yard line. There were defenders coming in his face. And, you know, there really was no room for a return there. And on top of that, the ball was bouncing all over the place. So very strange decision-making from the senior Nick Womp. A new lease on life for the ITC offense. Now on Skinny Atlas's 21. In the shotgun, Ratchford takes a snap. An end around handoff to Ajani Chuitongi, and he's brought down from behind. A nice job there on the tackle. R.A. Boney leading on that. It'll be a good pickup there, but it'll be a short one, and it'll be a second and medium. Great blocking on that play from ITC. The problem was that the... Um the runner just did not really have enough speed to get through that hole. There was an opening there. There was a crease on the right side. And there was actually a gap in the Skinny Atlas defense. The defensive line shifted, and there really was nobody in those outside gaps. But nonetheless, the defense was just a little bit quicker than the back was in that play. It took a little too long to develop. Second and eight coming up for ITC. 8.55 to go in the first quarter. Two receivers near side, one far, one man in the backfield with Ratchford. Takes the high snap, takes for himself up the middle, but he's brought down in the backfield. The sophomore, Jack Comer, a solo tackle there, and it'll be a third and long here for the Eagles. Another really strange play call. They've only had, the, had Ratchford drop back to pass once, and that was a rollout that he ended up keeping. Seems like they're a little bit scared to let him throw the ball, and if there's anything we've seen from this skinny Atlas defense is that you cannot get too predictable, and if you get too predictable, they will absolutely eat you alive with blitzes because they're not afraid to leave 10 people in the box. Third down and 10 from... The 20-yard line, lined up in the middle of the field. Two receivers near side, one far. A running back at the hip of Tavon Ratchford on his right side. And snap over the head of Ratchford, and he's just got to jump on top of that at around the 34-yard line. Squandered opportunity there, and on the fourth and long, a missed opportunity there as ITC probably has to punt here well out of a field goal range and certainly not an opportunity to go for it on fourth down. Absolutely, Brandon. We alluded to this in the pregame, and that's that against a team like Skinny Atlas, you can't afford to take it to not take advantage of early mistakes. Now, Skinny Atlas is a very prolific offensive team, but occasionally they have slow starts, like we saw today, where they can make a couple little mistakes early on in the game. And if they're going to do that, you have got to take advantage of that because that's not going to keep up for four quarters. You need to be able to go into that momentum with a lead. How about this? Fourth and 23, ITC is going for it. Three receivers out. Ratchford takes the snap, throws it high over to the left side, and incomplete. Luke Vigiano swats that one. That was intended for Leonair Nikuri, and just like that, Skinny Atlas takes back over. I actually love the call, though. That was a very good ball by Ratchford. Uh, the receiver just really did not make a play on that one. That was a one-on-one -on -one pass. Pretty solid ball. High. It had the distance, but unfortunately, the, unfortunately for ITC, that is, just not enough playmaking there from the receiving core. 7th, 19 left to go in the first quarter, and Skinny Atlas will get their first chance on offense, taking over on their own 34 after the 4th and 23 doesn't quite convert for ITC. As always, Pat Hackler in at quarterback, four receivers, two far side, two near side. Ari bon R.A. Boney at his right hip. Working from the middle of the field. Nate Wellington in motion to the right side. Hagler takes a snap, pitches it to the right side to Boney. He catches the outside, runs past the 40, and he's brought down up past the 45. Big pickup on the first offensive play, and that's good for a first down. That's a great offensive set for Skinny Atlas because when you bring out four receivers and when you've got Pat Hackler's threat as an arm, it's, it's not going to be easy to stack the box against that kind of set, and um, that makes it very easy for Boney to kind of chew up some easy yards and go a while until he hits first contact, especially because Skinny Atlas is so great at blocking. Um, when you've got such a threat at quarterback and when you're spreading the defense out, it really opens up the lanes for Boney. One play, one first down. First in 10 from the Skinny Atlas, 46. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near. Skinny Atlas quarterback Pat Hackler in the shotgun with Ari Boney on his right hip. Hackler takes the snap, hands it off up the middle to Boney. He runs past, gets to the second level, gets to the third level, and he's brought down well into ITC territory. Gets past the 40-yard line. And he'll be marked down at about the 36. Two carries for R.A. Boney and two first downs. Skinny Atlas made a, ran a perfect trap play right there. They executed that one very well. And that's something that we're probably going to be seeing all night from them. One thing you can always count on from Skinny Atlas is that they're very good at executing and blocking. 6.53 to go in the first quarter. Skinny Atlas first in 10 from the Eagles 37. 
Hackler takes the snap, looks to his right, throws right, and he gets caught by Font near the sideline. He breaks past the 30, 25, 20, and he spins around a couple defenders before he's tackled just inside the red zone. There is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. We'll see what this one is. No word from the officials just yet. It's a solid pickup there on that play from Nick Womp, but it looks like it's coming back. An eligible man downfield. An unfortunate penalty. It's a rare penalty for sure, but sometimes it can really hurt teams on big plays. And that one's going to get marked back a few yards. And Skinny Atlas will instead have a first and 15 from the Eagles 42. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those plays. You couldn't have drawn it up better on defense for, for um, ITC, but they just missed a tackle at the point of attack. Can't afford to do that against, against a team this good. Pat Hackler in the shotgun. Three receivers to his left, one to his right. R.A. Boney at his left hip. 6.24 to go in the first quarter. Hackler takes a snap, fakes the handoff to Boney. He runs to the outside, past the 35, and he's brought down. Gets a good pick of about 9 or 10 yards, and it'll be second and short after the first and 15. That's the thing about the skinny Atlas offense. They really can attack you in any way. They can throw downfield to Hackler. They can throw those short little screens to Wop. They can, the quarterback can run, and Boney, of course, is such a threat in between the tackles. Really, there's, there's no weak point for this offense, and that's kind of a tough thing when you're scheming defensively. You can try to blitz to stop the run, but then Hackler can beat you deep. You can sell out against the run, and then Hackler will just keep it himself and, take you, and gash you on the outside. Second down and five from the Eagles, 32. Still no score, 5.43 to go in the first quarter. Hackler takes the snap, hands it off up the middle to Boney. Gets past the first level, into the secondary, past the 20, 15, 10, and he's brought down from behind. Solid pickup there again from Ari Boney. You really can't bring him down today inside the 10-yard line and a first and goal coming up for the Lakers. You really couldn't draw it up much better if you're skinny Atlas. You know, you drop those kind of plays, but when you have a running back who just refuses to be tackled, that helps a lot too, and that's really been the game plan for skinny Atlas so far early on in the game. Instead of putting Pat Hackler in tough spots, they just hand the ball off and they let him go to work. Three receivers on the near side, one to the far side. As always, Ari Bonney at the right hip of Pat Hackler, who's in the shotgun. Working from the left hash inside the 10. Hackler takes the snap, looking to his left. Looks for Ellington to the end zone. Touchdown, Skinny Atlas. That was a perfect pass from Pat Hackler, and that was a very excellent effort. He had to do a little bit of a slide there to complete that catch. Beautiful play. They left him on an island in man coverage, and the cornerback just could not keep up. With 5.14 5 to go in this first quarter, the Lakers have taken an early 6-0 lead, and Nick Womps on to kick the extra point, as always. Pat Hackler out to hold. We talk a lot about talent, but ITC just feels a little bit overmatched right now on technique and scheming. They've got to make some adjustments. Long snap coming in, and Hattler takes it up. Nick Wong puts it up, and it's good. Right through the uprights, and it's 7-0 Lakers after their first offensive drive, and a solid start here for Skinny Atlas. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is, this is one of those drives that really just looks effortless. Um, Hackley went back to pass once, if you're not, unless you're counting that screen that, got, that came back on a penalty. When you've got a star quarterback, when you've got a guy who can make all the throws you want, and you only need him to throw the ball once in order for, for you to have a perfect drive down the field, that with really that had no hiccups other than one small penalty. Uh, you couldn't draw it up much better for Skinny Atlas. That's exactly the start you want. And from ITC's perspective, they've got to try to find some kind of solution. They didn't really commit to much on defense. Um, they respected the arm of Hackler, but then they just got ran up and down the field. And then at the end of that drive, we saw they really could do nothing to contain the pass. So right now, they're really doing neither. I think one of the only ways you can try to win against this team is if you get lucky with blitzes, because if you let Pat, Pat Hackler kind of dro drop back, he's going to cut you apart no matter how many men you drop into the, into the passing game. And if you drop all those guys, they can still run all over you. So to me, it seems like ITC is going to have to bring some blitzes and try to, try to disrupt something, because right now they've really got nothing going. For Pat Hackler, that's his 16th passing touchdown of the season. And the Skinny Atlas now have a 7-0 lead with 5.14 to go in the first quarter. Set to kick it off, left to right. As always, J.P. Chuitongi back to receive for the Eagles, along with Richard Alexander. Nick Wop to kick. Actually, it's Pat Hackler this time. It's a high squib, going to land near the 35, and it just almost is recovered by the Lakers. 
They had a gunner skating down the far sideline. Instead, it goes out of bounds, and it'll be ITC ball. Only a few feet from adding insult to injury there and getting another possession after a very, very effortless touchdown drive. One thing the Skinny Atlas team loves to do, they love their onside kicks, even if they're winning. But now ITC able to retain possession after that, and they'll take over on their own 35. You don't see it too often in some of the higher levels of football, but in high school, the onside kick can actually be pretty effective. A lot of the times, kind of the, 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 return, the return team is really not ready for it, and they've got kind of bigger linemen up in those front lines who really don't have enough reps to really deal with the ball coming towards them. So it makes sense as a strategy, and it almost worked out there for Skinny Atlas just a few feet away. And so taking over from their own 35 on the far hash, the Eagles getting ready. Down 7-0 with 514 to go in the first quarter. And the Skinny Atlas Lakers defense looking to stay strong after stopping them twice on one drive. They stopped them on a three and out. ITC punted it away. They recovered the punt after Nick Womp muffed the return. And another three and out after that. The Skinny Atlas defense stood strong. And now the Eagles with another chance. Tavon Ratchford in the backfield at quarterback. Richard Alexander on his left hip, three receivers on the near side. And one on the far side, lining up at tight end. And looks like it'll be an easy false start call as that one was snapped way before anyone else was ready. Yeah, it seems like the ITC is having some issues with the snap so far. They've had a false start. They had, of course, the uh, ball float far over Ratchford's head at the end of that last drive. I don't know if this is some kind of new center. I don't know if there's maybe some kind of miscommunication going on, but they need to get that under control. You can't get the little things wrong against a team this good. What well, was a first and 10 from their 35 is now a first and 15 on their own 30. After the false start on the offensive line of the Eagles. Again, Tavon Ratchford in the backfield and the shotgun at quarterback. Chuitangi in motion. Ratchford takes the snap, hands it off to Alexander. He gets swarmed at the line, but he breaks a few tackles. And he's brought down, gets a gain of about two or three. And it's going to be second and about 12 or 13, leading on the tackle there, Nick Womp on the defensive side. Alexander's running really tough so far. He's broken tackles really the entire night. The only problem is he is getting hit at the line of scrimmage every single time he touches the ball. ITC needs to do a better job of getting people down to the second level and blocking. Their guards are really doing nothing right now. Uh, they've got to get him some easy opportunities because he's running tough. Second and 11 on their own 34. Again on the far hash, all the receivers to the near side. Actually lined up in the pistol here. Ratchford takes the snap, hands it off to Alexander again. A one-arm tackle there at the line of scrimmage. No gain there for the Eagles offense. Nice stop there as the Eagles are going to face a third and long down 7-0 with 4.22 to go in this first quarter. I think we saw this last week against Bishop Ludden. If coaches think that they're going to be able to kind of run Skinny Atlas into oblivion, they're fooling themselves. You're really only going to get one, two, three yards every time. And if you think that you're going to somehow beat this team by running all over them, especially when they've got such a prolific offense, I don't think that's a very good strategy. I think we saw actually a very good ball, a very good deep ball from Ratchford on that last possession. To me, I think you've got to let him throw the ball because if Skinny Atlas doesn't believe that you have a credible quarterback, they have no reason to do anything other than sell out on the run. And right now that's what they're doing. And that's why... They've been facing long drives, or uh, rather um, really kind of tough down and distance situations every time so far. They've got to let, let Ratchford keep this defense honest. Looks like a penalty on that last play will be declined until it's third and 11 from the Eagles 34. Not sure what happened there. The down marker has been switched to two on the field. So it will be a second and 11 from the 34 yard line of ITC. A little bunch set up, looks like the wishbone here from the ITC offense, handoff on the outside and a gain, loss of yardage there. That one went to Raekwon Pry, but he's brought down out of bounds for a loss. Again, a very strange set. Um, and when, when you don't, when you, uh, when the co coordinators obviously don't trust their quarterback to really do anything, it's very difficult to expect Skinny Atlas to do anything but sell out for your run game. If you're gonna line up in that kind of set, you're really kind of showing your cards early on. And right now, Skinny Atlas really, it's, it's pretty easy defensive play calling for them right now. 4.13 to go in the first quarter. The Lakers still leading seven nothing over the Eagles and ITC working on a third and 11. Again, working in a very bunched set. Ratchford under center, hands it off up the middle, gain of about one or two. 
But again, only one or two on third and long isn't going to cut it, and it'll be a fourth down. Looked like it was Anthony King on the carry. Too little, too late. That's the kind of play that, see this is, this is kind of the problem that some of these teams are facing against Skinny Atlas is that y if you're only getting four or five yards once out of every five or six carries, there really isn't a reason to keep running that ball because you're gonna keep finding yourself in third and long. ITC punts it off end over end off the boot of Chewy Tongi. That one lands just in front of the 30 yard line in Laker territory and rolls out of bounds at about the 33. Nick Womp learned from his mistake. He was smart to just let that one roll this time. And so with 3.23 to go in the first quarter, the Lakers lead 7 to nothing and are taking over past their own 30-yard line. Great field position for this Skinny Atlas team that's known to be lethal and has already shown it tonight. I've actually been a little bit surprised that ITC has kind of been able to hold onto the ball a little bit. Uh, we haven't really seen too much of the Skinny Atlas offense, and there's, this quarter is almost over. And... Um, Looks if if um, pass success is any predictor, it looks like we might be shaping up for another long drive here for Skinny Atlas. First down and ten from their own 33, working on the far hash. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far. Hackler in the shotgun with Ari Boney on his right hip. Hackler in the shotgun, takes the snap, three-step drop, looking left, fires a deep ball over to Nate Wellington, and it's caught. Backpedaling and lands just short of the 35-yard line in Eagles territory. That was an absolutely beautiful ball right there from Hackler. Uh, he really threaded the needle. The ball was maybe inches over the hand, the outstretched hands of that defender. Really an excellent ball from Hackler. That's you see why he's he's the state player of the year when you look at throws like that. Just one play and it goes into Eagles territory. A timeout is called on the field and Michael. Just those few plays that the Skinny Atlas offense has had to work with, they've been on the field far less than ITC has, but they're just absolutely dominating this game. That's very true. They've, there's really been one play this entire game on offense where they have not executed perfectly, and that was because of a penalty, an illegal down man downfield penalty. Every play since then and before that, it's been basically flawless execution from Skinny Atlas. They're really showing out tonight. Recapping that first drive, it was Ari Boney all the way through inside the 10-yard line. The only exception, there was a quick screen pass to Nick Womp that picked up a good amount of yards, but that was called back due to the illegal man downfield that Michael was talking about. But then Pat Hackler put an easy pass over the middle to Nate Wellington for the first touchdown of this ball game. And now Hackler getting the Lakers roll offense rolling once again. They're in ITC territory on the Eagles' 36-yard line. First and 10 coming up for the offense. 3.16 to go here in the first quarter. One receiver on the far side, three to the near side. Hackler is always working out of the shotgun. Ari Boney is on his left hip. And Hackler takes the snap, hands it right off to Boney, who takes it off the outside tackle, runs back up the middle, past the 35, into the 20. And he lands just inside the red zone. A pick of about 15 yards there for Boney. And a Lakers first down. It's deja vu all over again for ITC. They've been running those trap plays all night, or at least as many plays as they've had. They've been running it a lot, and it's they have yet to stop it. Hackler in the shotgun again. Same setup for the Lakers. 2.50 to go in this first quarter, leading 7 to nothing. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. He takes the snap, hands it off to Boney once again, and he runs it up the middle, but this time he's met by a good pack of defensive linemen. Nice job there up front by the Eagles to stop that ball. Reese Flanagan led on defense there for ITC. Very strong play there from ITC. Israel McKenzie was the linebacker who came in and kind of blew that play up at the point of attack. Very rarely do we see teams beat Skinny Atlas at the line of scrimmage, but right there that was, that, was, that was one play where they did, and that's a good way to set the tone here for this red zone stand. Second and 10 from the 20-yard line. Ari Boney, a rare no-gain rush there. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far, and a flag on the field before the play. And looks like this might be on the coaching staff of ITC. It looks like they're going to get players for standing outside of the boundary. Now, here in high school football, there are boundaries in the field, and people from the staff can't exceed those boundaries, and it looks like that's what they're going to be getting in trouble for. Looks like it's simply a warning. No impact on the field of play, so still second and ten 
from the Eagles 20 yard line after Ari Boney had no pickup on that rush. 2.04 to go in this first quarter of play. The Lakers out in front seven and nothing looking for another touchdown here. Hackler in the shotgun. Boney at his right hip, he takes a snap, looking left for Nate Wellington, puts it over the middle, a nice fade pass to the back of the end zone. Does he have it? He Touchdown does. in the back corner of the end zone. Wellington brings it in. That was a perfect ball from Hackler, and we've seen this on back-to-back -back touchdowns. ITC's defensive backs really just have no idea what to do when the ball's in the air. That was a very beautiful pass from Hackler, but that was a manageable play to defend. And when you lose one, when you just can't win one on one battles down there, it's very difficult to play against a quarterback with an arm like Hackler because he's just going to pick you apart. If even when you're in solid position, you still can't make a play on the ball, tough spot to be in. Womp back to kick the extra point. Now a 13 0 lead. Snap, hold, kick, make it 14 0. Womp puts it through the uprights, and it's a two, two, two touchdown lead here near the end of the first quarter. Here for Skinny Atlas, out to a solid offensive start, even though for most of this first quarter, they haven't even had the football. Yeah, it's, they've maybe ran 12 or 13 plays this game, and it's already 14 nothing. As I mentioned again earlier in that post game, and we kind of saw it there in the first, so far at the beginning of that first quarter, you cannot afford to not take advantage of mistakes in games like this. And after that muff punt, you got to come up with points because you're not going to get too many opportunities to um, hold Skinny Atlas to two drives in a quarter. That's not going to happen probably for the rest of this game. And the fact that um, ITC couldn't capitalize is probably going to come back to haunt them here. And now, as Skinny Atlas gets set to kick off again, their first two kicks, a couple of squibs. They love to squib an onside kick here. Do you think after a two-touchdown lead, they try it again? That's really their bread and butter. And it seems like their strategy with at least the kicking is that they feel more comfortable trying to force their opponent into a mistake then they feel just kind of kicking it deep and trying to win that field position game. And if that's their plan, if that's the game plan, if that's something we see from them all game throughout the season, I don't see why they depart from it now. It's only 14-0. Skinny Atlas set to kick off after getting a 14-0 lead after the second touchdown pass of the day from Pat Hackler, both of them going to Nate Wellington. Nick Womp set to kick from the Skinny Atlas 40. As always, Alexander and Chewy Tongi back to receive for the Eagles. Ball getting kicked up from the near hash, getting kicked from left to right. This one a deep boot here from the, the leg of Nick Womp. It's fumbled on the reception by Chewy Tongi. He's gonna take it up the middle, past the 20, past the 25, 30, gets to the outside. He's met by a defender and he's brought down by a pack of Lakers, but a solid return there after Chewy Tongi seemingly started within his own 10 yard line. That was an outstanding play right there from Chewy Tongi. He muffed the punt initially, and that kind of made us all hold our breath, our breath there for a second. But he has some great speed, and we saw it on that run. He, there wasn't really too much blocking, but he still found a little bit of a crease, and he was able to make up that ground in no time. You would not think from looking at the final two seconds of that play that that started with a muff. Chewy Tongi, the cog of this Eagles offense, as they now get to start from their own 33. First and 10 coming up, trailing 14-0 with 137 to go in this first quarter. Two receivers near side, one far. Ratchford in the shotgun, a man in motion. Ratchford takes the snap, hands it off, and he's brought down right away. Richard Alexander stays on his feet, actually, in the back, and he's brought down. He's trying to stay on his feet really hurt Richard Alexander there on that handoff. What could have been a loss of five now is more like a loss of 10 or 12. Yeah, I think that was Jimmy Liberatore in the backfield initially with the stop, and it looked like he was going to bring him down. He had his hands all over his jersey. But he lost grip at the last second, and then after that, Alexander lost about five more yards. That's a disaster, and that's the second time tonight that an ITC player has ran into his own lineman. Second and 23 now coming from the 20-yard line of the Eagles with only a minute left to go in this first quarter. They're down two touchdowns, and seemingly they can't get anything going right now. It's second just been and 23. Let's see if they, the coaching staff trust Ratchford to get a little something going through the air or if they're going to stick with that run-heavy scheme. The Eagles back in the wishbone. Ratchford hands it off to Alexander once again. He can't get anywhere. And it's brought down for either no gain or a loss of maybe one or two. And it'll be a third and eternity here for the Eagles as the play clock still requires them to run one more play before the end of this first quarter. Kind of a curious play call on second and eternity. It seems like kind of a strange move to run out of a heavy set. It's a little predictable. And um, no surprise there that that play went for a loss. Uh, right now, 
Skinny Alex really has no reason to respect the passing game right now. And when you play one-dimensional, a team that's this talented can beat you pretty easily. And that will, that will end the quarter. And as the clock winds down, I misread when the difference was going to be. But the clock's run out on the first quarter. Skinny Atlas leads ITC 14-0. You're listening to Lakers football on CNY Stream. Welcome back to Skinny Atlas Lakers football on CMY Stream. One quarter of play in the books and 14-0 lead for the Lakers as they're defending against the Eagles who are running a third and 25 from their own 18-yard line. Wishbone once again. Ratchford gives the ball off to the left side. This time it's to, to Juan Tigner. He picks up about two or three yards on the left side of the field but not nearly enough on a third and long and it's going to be a fourth down and they're going to have to punt here. Yeah, that's the kind of day it's been for ITC. Um, there was a tiny bit of running room there, only a two-yard gain. That felt like the most they've really had going on offense for a couple minutes now, and that's that's kind of shows the kind of day it's been for ITC. And now Skinny Atlas Lakers, after standing tall on that defensive drive, forcing them way back into their own zone. Good field position no matter what coming up as 4th and 22 results in a Chewy Tongi punt to come. Nick Womp back to return for the Lakers as this ball now being punted left for right as the teams switch positions of field after the quarter. Ball kicked end over end, gonna land just short of the midfield, bounce past the 45, and it's gonna be downed by the Eagles at the Lakers 40 or 41 yard line. You know, not a lot has gone ITC's way so far, but I can say this, they've got a pretty solid punting game. They've actually done a pretty good job of not, despite the fact that they've had a lot of plays where they've been back deep into their own end zone, or in their, own, in their own territory, rather. They've actually been able to kind of get out of some of those jams. With the way that drive ended, it's kind of kind of impressive to see that Skinny Atlas is only starting this drive at the 40. What little the Eagles can produce, it all comes through Chewy Tongi, who's getting a lot done here. And now the Lakers, prime field position, starting from their own 40. First and 10 with 11.05 to go in the first quarter. Working from the far hash, one receiver to the far side, three to the near side. Hackler in the shotgun with Ari Boney on his left hip. Hackler takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Boney, looking to the left side, now checks right, throwing it high over the right side to Nick Wall, but it's incomplete. But the defensive back for the Eagles gonna get flagged for pass interference. We don't know just yet. No signal from the officials, but likely pass interference call coming. That didn't seem like a clear one to me. I actually think they kind of they were both kind of wrestling with each other as the ball was in the air there. To me, that doesn't look like a decisive call, but we'll see what the officials have to say on this one. And with that play, now in high school rules, unlike the NFL, it doesn't happen at the spot of the foul. And it just gets moved up by at most a certain amount of yards. And that is called on the Eagles defense. And with 10.58 to go in the second quarter of play now, the Lakers have a 14-0 lead and now move across midfield. And we'll have a first in 10 from ITC's 45-yard line. Yeah, kind of an interesting call there. I didn't, I didn't really expect that one. Uh, you saw the flag come out early on in that throw. Bit of an iffy call there, in my opinion. Now going to two receiver sets, two to the left side, two to the right. Hackler in the shotgun with Ari Boney now on his left hip. 
Receiver in motion to the left side. Hackler takes the snap, pitches it outside to Boney, finds a lane, and he's brought down at the line of scrimmage, but not before picking up another four or five yards after charging through the defensive line. A flag at the end of the play. We'll see what it is and who is on. But Ari Boney, regardless, very good at keeping plays alive, even when it looks like he's down for sure. Absolutely. We've, we've talked about his toughness all night, but an underrated skill of his is, his is his vision and his ability to cut. He really turned nothing into something there with a very, very smart cut up the middle. Dewan Tigner was first there on that play. It's a face mask on the ITC defense. So from where that spot ended at about the 40, they're going to move that up even further. And now the Lakers are taking over. It'll be a first and 10 from the Eagles' 35-yard line after the face mask on that play. Hackler takes a snap, looking to his right, looking for Nick Wom, now the right sideline, and it's incomplete. That was kind of a forced throw from Hackler. That was the first throw I think we've really seen tonight downfield where ITC has really, really held their own in man coverage. Something we've seen so far in defense from them is they're really kind of gearing towards the pass. They're dropping a safety back almost every play, and they're playing that press man. Very, very good coverage there. Something we haven't seen too much of tonight from ITC. And on that last play, at the scoreboard was a little bit misleading. At the end of the play, they moved it up a few yards, and so that last play was second and one. It's now third and one from the 36 of the Eagles. 10.38 to go in this second quarter. Lakers with a 14 to nothing lead. Third and one, three receivers near side, one to the far. Hackler takes the snap, hands it off to Boney up the middle. He gets it to the secondary, has one man to beat. Puts out a stiff arm and he powers through that tackler. Touchdown, Lakers. That was an unbelievable play right there from Boney. And that was not what you want to see from ITC on defense. I mean, the, the lane was just wide open on that play. As soon as he got past the line of scrimmage, there was really no hope. Stiff arms the defender. It just seems like he's on another planet right now. It 30, seems like he's playing with middle schoolers. 36-yard touchdown run there for Ari Boney. He's been the cog of this offense tonight, getting everything going. Sure, the first two touchdowns belong to Pat Hackler, but the way was paved from Ari Boney. And now Nick Womp on to kick the extra point. A 20-0 lead for the skinny Atlas Lakers. And the ball is snapped to the holder, Pat Hackler. He puts it down. And the play's whistled dead and the flag's on the field. Not often you see something like that on an extra point attempt, but it looks like they might move this one back a few yards on a false start. Absolutely, and that's the kind of day it's been for Skinny Atlas. Um, we've talked about how spectacular Pat Hackler's been, but he's only completed two passes, oddly enough, that at least have stood after penalties. And um, that just shows how talented and versatile this team is. Now Womp to kick from a little bit further back. Ball is placed down, extra point is up, and it goes right through the uprights. 21-0 Lakers here with 10-3 to go in the first half. And the road's been paid by Ari Boney, even though the first two touchdowns belong to Pat Hackler and Nate Wellington. He's, he's really done what we've seen him do all season, and that's just be darn near impossible to tackle. He's got an unbelievable lower body. He's really able to keep churning for those extra yards. He's tough to bring down with one man. And as we saw last play, he certainly has that stiff arm in his arsenal. And he, was, he is not the kind of guy you want to meet in the open field. And now Ari Boney, he's been the cog on the offensive side, but he's good at defense too. He's got a lot of repertoire there on the defensive side. Absolutely, he's got 58 total tackles so far this season. He's a hard hitter. Very, very physical player, and that's something we see from Skinny Atlas a lot, actually. Uh, they've got a lot of players, including their stars, who really play all over the field. Not often you see a quarterback playing on defense, and Pat Hackler does that. And Nick, Nick Womp plays almost every play of the game. He's the kicker, and he plays defense and offense for this team. So he, they, there's a lot of multi-talented people on this offense, on this roster, rather, and Boney is one of those guys. Something we haven't seen that the Lakers do sometimes do, they put Pat Hackler out on fourth down and have him pooch punt. Haven't seen that yet, but out of this rate, it doesn't look like we're going to see any fourth downs from Skinny Atlas. So we'll see what ends up happening here. Nick Womp set to kick off to ITC after scoring on the 36-yard touchdown run by Ari Boney. Working from the far hash on the 40-yard line, kicking from right to left. It's Alexander and Chewy Tongi back to receive for the Eagles. Referee whistles play live. And Nick Womp set to kick. 
This one an onsider getting just past the 40 and jumping on top of that one is Deontay Philpott to keep the Lakers from getting that ball back. They'll have it just past the 35 yard line. Eagles with good field position. You know, ITC has looked kind of unexperienced. They've looked overmatched so far. One thing I can say positively for them is that they've handed some of these tricky kicks from Skinny Atlas very well. They have yet to kind of make a mistake, and that's something that Skinny Atlas counts on when they make those kind of kicks. They count on inex inexperienced players kind of fumbling those plays, and they've done a good job of handling it so far. So the Eagles getting started on the far hash on their own 36-yard line. Tavon Ratchford again out to lead this offense. Two receivers on the near side, two to the right. Chewy Tongi in motion, snap taken, and it's an end around pitch to Chewy Tongi who takes it to the left side, past the first down marker. He's gonna get ruled out of bounds just past the marker. That's a 10 yard pickup there for Chewy Tongi and a first down for the Eagles, the only one on the day so far for them. That is a great play call, very inventive. They get their best player the ball in space and I think they kinda caught Skinny Atlas sleeping a little bit on that one. They've been very, very um, repetitive with the play calling and I think they have kinda got a little too comfortable on defense there. And now ITC, the chance to organically move into opponent territory for the first time. The only time they've been in Lakers territory came after a punt got muffed by Nick Womp on a punt return. Chewy Tongi in motion to the right side. Tavon Ratchford in the shotgun, takes the snap, looks right. The throw over is complete to Nakuri and he gets a pickup of about seven yards before he's brought down in the second level. Pick up about eight yards there, and they're in Lakers territory now, second and short coming up. I think that's a really smart call from the coaching staff. Um, they've really struggled with blocking all night, and if you're going to get your players the ball in space, it seems like those little hitch routes and screens and end arounds are the way to do it, not necessarily running up the gut. Coach is seeming to trust Tavon Ratchford a little bit more there in at quarterback. Three receivers set to the right side, one to the left. Ratchford in the shotgun with a running back on his right hip. Ratchford takes the low snap, hands it off to Alexander. He picks up about two or three yards, and he might have gotten the first down there. We'll see where the refs spot it. But a great pickup there by Richard Alexander, and it looks like it's going to get the chains moving. Very, very good. Now, see, we're starting to find a little versatility. That kind of play works after you get two solid gains, after you get some passing. But when you're running that same dive play over and over again, it gets very, very easy to anticipate. 9.35 to go in the second quarter of play. The Lakers up 21-0, but the Eagles rampaging into their territory here with the chance for their first score of the game. Tavon Ratchford takes the shotgun snap, looking to his left for Chewy Tongi. He gets the pass, gets it up the middle, breaks to the outside, past the 25-20, and he's finally brought down close to the red zone. Nice pick up there on the pass from Ratchford to Chewy Tongi, and he's running the offense right now. That was a great play call. That was actually a very solid ball from Ratchford, and um, kind of curious decision. They were playing very, very off man coverage on the outside, and when you're playing against a quarterback who does not have a super strong arm, kind of a curious decision there in the secondary. And now a first and 10 coming up from the 21 yard line of Skinny Atlas. Ratchford in the shotgun. Swallows the snap, look to his start. left, but a false start coming on the that offensive wasn't even line. Close. I mean, the receivers started running about three quarters of a second before the ball was even snapped. That could have been a false start on about seven different players right there. And now, after that false start, that ball is moving back another five yards, and that first and 10 from the 21 becomes a first fifth and 15 from the 26 yard line. 9.03 to go in this second quarter. Skinny Atlas leading 21 to nothing, but the Eagles bang on the door with a chance to score. You gotta love what you're seeing from ITC so far if you're that coaching staff. This is where you start to find kind of a healthy balance as a play caller. You're getting the runs, you're getting the ball outside, you're throwing these short passes. And if Skinny Atlas keeps playing this kind of defense where they're kind of giving the receivers a free release, it could be easy for um, their quarterback to get in a little bit of a rhythm throwing the ball short. Another three receiver set to the right side here for, Ta for Tavon Ratchford. Takes the snap. Fakes, hands it off to Richard Alexander, and the ball's fumbled behind the line of scrimmage. He jumps back on top of it. It'll be a loss of yardage there for the Eagles, and a second and long coming up after first and 15 it was already bad enough. Very, very rough way to start a drive. That is not how you do it. This is the kind of team that it's very difficult for them to find themselves in third and long situations. Skinny Atlas has a great front line. They love to blitz, and when you get in those longer down and distances, it can be very difficult to kind of get the time you need to complete the throws for those kind of long plays. Second down and 20 coming up from their own 31. 
8.01 to go in this second quarter. The Lakers ahead at 21 to nothing. And no backs in the backfield. Five receivers set here for the Eagles offense. Ratchford takes the snap, looks left. Quick screen pass to Richard Alexander. Breaks the outside, spins around a tackler. And he's brought down for a gain of just under 10 yards. It'll still be a third and long here, but a nice pickup there for the Eagles offense. Yeah, solid little play on that hitch route. We saw that exec, that same kind of route compadron work. And Skinny Atlas seems like they're going to just give him that one. Uh, it looks like they're not going to press. They're going to kind of stay in that off coverage. And they're just going to try to see if, if they can string together completions and beat them. Same package coming out here. No running backs, five receivers. Two to the far side, three to the near. Ratchford all alone in the backfield. He takes the shotgun snap, looking to his left. Heavy pressure on that play, and it's incomplete. Just over the hands of Richard Alexander. And that's going to result in a fourth and long. And that could be the danger of putting out five receivers in that kind of play, is that sometimes without that extra blocking against a team like this, you just don't have the time to get a good throw off. And another thing is it looked like most of the receivers there for ITC were running patterns short of the first down marker, which maybe shows you how, how they feel about Ratchford's arm. And they will go for it on fourth down. Rye not there close. They're on the 23-yard line of Skinny Atlas. Down by three touchdowns, 7-11 to go in this second quarter. Ratchford takes the snap, looking deep down the left sideline. And that one is intercepted by Craig Shearer in the end zone. Yeah, Ratchford just tossed that one up. And there was a little bit of space there. There was a chance to make a play, but he just threw it a little bit too far inside. And that's a tough situation to put your quarterback in. You know they're bringing the blitz. It seems like you've got to give him a little bit of a better opportunity to make a solid throw. He just had a very quick little three-step drop, and he had to just set his feet and just let one go because he had skinny house defenders all over him. And Craig Scherer after that interception. It's a warm welcome from his teammates out there on the field. He stays out on offense as now after the touchback on the interception, the Lakers take over on their own 20. 7.05 to go in the second quarter. And they're still ahead 21 to nothing. A big opportunity wasted there for the Eagles on their first trip, getting very close to the red zone on Skinny Atlas's territory. First down and 10. Hackler in the shotgun, two receivers to each side. Ari Boney on his right hip. Heavy press coverage coming from the cornerbacks on the two outside receivers. Hackler takes the snap, hands it off up the middle to Boney. He picks up about five yards before he's brought down at the second level. It's a good pickup there for Boney, a shorter one relative to his many big pickups on today's contest. So now second and five coming up from the 25-yard line. And Boney is running the offense after the Lakers take over. There's really no reason to get too um, outlandish here at the play call. Just give the ball to Boney and hold on to that lead. Hackler in the shotgun. He takes the snap, rolling to his left side. Tosses it short to Luke Vigiano, who runs past the 30 and the 35. And he's brought down just beyond the 40-yard line. <laughs> Took three men to get him down. And it'll be about the 43-yard line. Solid 20-yard pickup there on the short dump-off pass to Vigiano. Something we've seen so far from ITC is that they kind of struggle with that open field tackling. We saw it on the WAMP screen that came back, and we saw it there. The defensive backs and the linebackers just kind of seem to have a lot of trouble getting to the sidelines to make some of those tackles. They might be lacking a little bit of speed there on the second level of that defense. First down and 10 from the Lakers, 43. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near, one running back in the backfield, as always, Ari Boney. Hacker takes the snap, fakes the handoff, gives it off short to Nate Wellington, that gets past defender, back. and Nate Wellington gets past and gets a big pickup here. Looks like he might streak to the end zone. This He'll get there, but the this one's back. coming back. Very, very obvious block in the back. Looks like it's going to be a legal block in the back. It seemed very obvious from the start there, and that good... 50-plus yard touchdown pass to Nate Wellington is going to result in a loss of yardage after the penalty. Yep, that was an obvious one right there. Very, very obvious one. And it's a shame because that was a very outstanding play down the field. But unfortunately, that one wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for that block. And it's kind of a tough position to find yourself in if you're a lineman down the field because you're at that kind of strange angle where you want to make a play on the ball, but... Unfortunately, he really found himself in a position where he couldn't make a legal block there without really, um, with, at least with the angle he had, it just was not possible. And so first and 10 becomes a first and 20 from their own 33-yard line. 
And 5.56 to go in the first half. And a 21-0 lead still for Skinny Atlas. But now with a little bit more of a challenge as the first in 10 and a touchdown opportunity there comes a first and long as a result of a block in the back. They flip the set this time. Three receivers to the false far side, one to the near. Hackler, as always, in the shotgun. Man coverage here from the Eagles defense. And a flag. a flag on the field already on this play. We'll see what the call is. That ball's getting moved back even further after a false start. So how about that? Looked like a neutral zone infraction on one of the offensive linemen. Looked like it might have been Josh McIntyre, number 66. And it's now coming a first and 25 from the 27 yard line of Skinny Atlas. Hackler in the backfield, working out of the shotgun, takes the snap, looks straight to his left, finds Craig Scherer down the near sideline, breaks past a couple defenders, past the 45, past the 50, Stiff Arm City, 35 yard line, it runs out of bounds, just shy of the Eagles 30. And that's a big time pickup, over 20 yards there for Craig Scherer, and now they're in Eagles territory. Mentioned it a few plays ago, and it seems to just be coming true over and over again. ITC just is really struggling right now, making those tackles at the boundary. They missed three very, very easy tackles in that play. Two receivers to each side now working from the left hash. The Lakers now 5.47 to go in the second quarter as two receivers confused as to which one's in motion, but they all get back to their original position. Hackler clarifies it for them. First and 10 from the opposing 30. Wellington in motion this time, working from left to right. Hackler takes the snap and another flag on the field. It looks like this one again going on the Lakers. False start. So it appears. False starts haven't really been hurting them so far, but you got to think that the coaches are still a little bit upset because this kind of behavior can hurt them when they find tougher opponents in playoff time. That's very true. You know, it, it was funny. We were back there at about a first and 20, first and 30, and yet it still felt really manageable. When you've got Pat, ha Pat Hackler back there, it's really easy to cover up a lot of those moles offensively. Got a lot of great receiving options too. Craig Shearer had that big pickup, and then you also have Nick Wop and Nate Wellington. Now working from the 35-yard line, first and 15. Hackler takes a snap, shovel pass up the middle to Nate Wellington, breaking the outside, past the 30. And it's a solid pickup there of about seven or eight. And it'll be a second and medium here as 5.35 to go in this second quarter. And a 21-0 lead could build even further as the offense really can't get stopped here for the Lakers. That's a difference we've seen from these two teams when they get dig themselves into a hole, skinny atlas and get out of it. Hackler in the shotgun again, has three receivers to his right, takes the snap, rolls out immediately to his right, dumps it off to the short side to Nate Wellington, breaks to the outside, past the 20, and he's brought down just short of the 15 by a pair of Eagles defenders. Solid pickup, and that'll be a first and 10 coming up from the 16-yard line of ITC. And once again, it just feels effortless for Skinny Atlas. They just seem to be strolling down the field. Even when Hackler has first, and, has first and long, second and long after penalties, feels very, very manageable for this offense. Wellington has been his go-to tonight. Womp with no receptions, all but one going to Nate Wellington with a pair of touchdowns as well. First and 10 from the Eagles 16. Skinny Atlas quarterback Hackler takes the snap, looks to his left, looking for Craig Scherer, and it's incomplete. Running across the field to try to get that one on an out route. Nate Wellington couldn't get his hands on it. Yeah, Wellington kind of mishandled that one. That should have been a catch. But um, one of the things you see from Skinny Atlas, that's a play they love on the goal line and that they're in the red zone. They've ran that one last week for a touchdown too. And something that's interesting for this, this, um, this coaching staff is that they really never seem out of character. It feels like every play call just feels natural and smooth, and it feels like a manageable play that they can run. And now second and 10 coming up here on the 16-yard line still after that incompletion at Nate Wellington. Just over five minutes to go here in the second quarter, 21-0 the Lakers lead. And the Eagles backed up, and they need to take a tall stand here if they want to keep the Lakers out of the end zone. Boney switches sides on Hackler. Short dump off pass to Boney on the left side. Runs back up, cuts on the near side of the field. And he's charges past the 10-yard line inside, close to the 5. He carried defenders close to 10 yards after getting that short pass. And that pickup might be good for a first down, but it looks like he's going to get marked just short. That one felt predictable. Um, we've seen that really all night. Somebody catches the ball out in the flat and just tackles are being missed all over the place. Third and inches here from the seven yard line. 
Hackler in the shotgun, two receivers to each side. Three strep drop from Hackler. He's brought down behind the line and he gets rid of it. No completion there, but it's going to be a fourth and short, and you'd expect the Lakers to go for it, even though they do have Nick Womp as an option. He tried to hit Womp on a little in route there, but the ball was just a little bit too far behind Womp for him to really make the play there. Not a great throw by Hackler. So fourth down and one, as expected. They're going for it. Two receivers to each side. Ari Boney on the left hip of Pat Hackler in the shotgun. Already with a three-touchdown lead, Boney switches to the right hip of Pat Hackler. He takes a snap. He's going to draw right up the middle. Past the end zone. Touchdown, Skinny Atlas. That was an easy one for Pat Hackler. Just strolling right through the defense and just kind of walking right through those arm tackles. And now with that touchdown, all three of the four touchdowns today for Skinny Atlas, courtesy of Pat Hackler, two through the air. Another one right there on the seven-yard pickup on the ground. And with a 27-0 lead with 4.27 to go in the second quarter, Nick Womp on to kick the extra point. See if he can make it 28 now. Pat Hackler on to hold. Long snapper sends a low snap, corrals it. Womp puts it through the uprights, and it's 28 to nothing. This is almost the one touchdown short of the last week's score for the entire game, and we're not even out of the first half yet. I was just thinking the same thing, Brandon. And um, we saw a little bit of a, a slow start for Skinny Atlas last week. Uh, midway through the second quarter, they really only had about 14 points. And right now, we've already seen them double that. And it looks like they are just going to absolutely pour it on. And the backups ended up coming in at about 28-35 nothing at the end of the fourth quarter. And um, if this game is, if they can get another two touchdowns before the fourth quarter, we'll see exactly when those backups come in for Skinny Atlas. Interesting call for the coaching staff, especially on senior night. And it's an interesting call as well to factor in the fact that they're up so much so early. Sometimes coach is, they have to factor in how long they have to get these players ready to play because while it's disrespectful to run up the score like this on a lot of teams, sometimes it happens and you have to get your players ready for the playoffs and you, they can't be ready if they can't go a full four quarters. Another thing players like, or coaches at least, like to do is kind of dig into that playbook and try out some of those new wrinkles in situations like this where there's not that much pressure. And so Skinny Atlas to kick off once again, leading 28-0 with 4.27 to go in the second quarter. Kicking from right to left, Nick Wampa on to kick, as always, from the right hash for Skinny Atlas. And as always, Tui Chongi, rather Chui Tongi, and Richard Alexander back to receive. We've had seen a few onside kicks and squib kicks from Nick Womp, and sometimes we've seen some trickery where Pat Hackler ends up kicking it. So we'll see what happens here as Nick Womp gets ready to kick this one off. The referees whistle this one in, and Womp on to kick. This one, another squib kick past the 40, and it's going to be jumped on top of by an Eagles player, and it'll be ITC ball at their own 41. And um, that's a pretty solid field position to start out. And we actually saw ITC get a little bit of momentum offensively on that last drive. They were able to kind of let Ratchford throw the ball and get a few little easy completions. Four minutes and 24 seconds. They've got time for a drive if they can kind of just avoid those third and longs that they've been trapped in so often in this game. And also on that one kick that Womp actually kicked deep, Chewy Tongi was actually able to get a good return. You'd think they onside kick and squib so much that it might just be to keep it a weakness on the down low? That's possible. And so now the Eagles coming out with a first in 10 on their own 42-yard line. Ratchford in the backfield under center. It's an I formation here, a new set we haven't seen so far tonight from the Eagles. Ratchford takes the snap, hands it off up the middle to Richard Alexander. It gains about four or five yards before he's brought down from behind. It'll be second and five or six coming up from the Eagles with 4.15 to go in this second quarter, already trailing by four touchdowns against the Lakers. Yeah, very. that's actually a pretty solid call there from ITC. And it's funny, the way football has kind of changed over the years. I formation used to be such a standby in football, and I was almost, my eyes were a little confused when I saw ITC line up in the eye. That's something I haven't seen a high school football team do in quite a while. And now, after running the eye for the first time tonight, looks like they are going to return to that right here. Second and six from their own 46. Two receivers to the left side, Ratchford under center takes the snap, hands it off up the middle. This time it goes to Shamik Williams, who picks up about two or three yards before he's met at the second level, and it'll be a third and short coming up. Yeah, one thing to see if they stick with this I formation. Can they run pass plays out of it? Are they going to do play action? 
because if not, that I formation that is working okay on this drive is going to become predictable very, very quickly, and that's going to be something that Skinny Atlas is going to be able to sniff out. And you mentioned the passing game. On that last drive, the Laker, the rather the Eagles were able to get something going when they started allowing Ratchford to throw the football, but here it might be a limited set. Looks like an awkward penalty call that came in very late on the Lakers, and that's going to move them up to a first down and into Skinny Atlas territory. They ended up calling defensive holding, which is something you don't see very often on a run play. Certainly not. So now a first and 10 coming up from the 47-yard line of Skinny Atlas. The Eagles with a chance again in Lakers territory. 3.23 to go in the second quarter. Eagles trying to chip into a four-touchdown lead. They haven't found the scoreboard yet. ITC back again in the I formation. Radford takes the snap, hands it off once again, this time once again to Richard Alexander. Can't pick up too much. There'll be no gain there. Actually, it's Shamik Williams. Check that. A run for no gain for the junior, and it'll be second and ten. If, they, if they're going to have success out of the formation, they've got to try to come up with a little bit more variety. Uh, those plays have looked pretty solid. They've drawn them up well, those dive runs, those runs right up the four hole. But unfortunately, they've got to be able to pass out of that set if they're going to use it all game. 2.41 to go in the second quarter. 28-0 lead for Skinny Atlas, and the Eagles back in the eye formation. Ratchford under center, takes the snap, pitches it to the outside to Williams, and he's met at the corner. Nice bring down by Jack Comer. Williams only able to get about two or three, and it'll be second and, a, rather, third and about eight coming up for the Eagles. Jack Comer only a sophomore, but he's everywhere at that linebacker position. He's been very active so far this game, and that's one of the very strengths of the Skinny Atlas defense is that their second level can come up and make those tackles. They play them in the box a lot. A lot of high school football teams struggle with the passing game. And when those linebackers are just allowed to stay at home and sit on those run plays, it can be very easy for them to rack up tackles. And we're seeing that tonight. Jack Comer, a very talented player. They can all section as just a freshman. I formation once again, third and seven. Handoff up the middle again before Richard Alexander is absolutely leveled at about the knees. Alexander almost got upended on that play. It'll be a fourth and about six and seven yards here with a minute 42 left in the second quarter. A timeout called by the Lakers. And looks like the offense will stay on the field. The offense will probably stay on the field here. They're down by four touchdowns, so there's really no downside. But what do you think the Eagles need to do here if they want to keep this drive alive? I think they've gotten a little too predictable. On the last offense we saw, on the last drive rather, we saw that the coaching staff kind of switched up. I thought they made a lot of really smart moves. They were running end of rounds. They were running little hitch routes. And oddly enough, I mean, he ended the drive with an interception, but I thought Ratchford actually looked pretty good. He made some, he stepped up, he made throws, he handled the pressure. He's only a 5'9 quarterback against the best team, at least the third best team, at least according to the rankings in the state right now. And I think they've got to give him the position to kind of grow up on the field here. If they're going to baby him, they're not going to get much, but if you if you kind of give him the reins and you let him try to make some plays, maybe you can make something happen. You know, you're down four touchdowns. What's the point of being so conservative? Tavon Ratchford, not a big guy. The junior, only five foot nine, 160 pounds, but trying to carry this offense for ITC. They have a fourth and six from the Skinny Atlas 43-yard line, and it looks like they are going to punt here with a minute 42 left in the first half. Kind of an interesting call. Fourth and six is frankly better than a lot of the third downs they've had this game. They've had a lot of third and eights, a lot of third and tens. Uh, kind of an interesting call. Maybe a little too conservative. Well, Lakers not sending anyone back to return. It was a very short punt, so Nick Womp might be able to pick this one up. But instead, he's just going to let it roll, and it'll be down by the Eagles right about the 15-yard line. And so no time runs off the clock on that place. The Lakers will have a minute and 42 seconds in this first half to get on the scoreboard once again. And if they find the end zone, it'll match their entire total from last week in just one half of football. Absolutely. They've had a really fast start today, and they have executed very, very well on offense. They've had, they had that little special teams hiccup in the first quarter, but on offense, it has really been smooth sailing. No punts so far this game. And so on the far hash, the Lakers take over on the 17-yard line. Two receivers to each side. Pat Hackler is always in the shotgun. Ari Boney on his left hip. Tight man coverage here coming up for the ITC defense. 
Man goes in motion. Hackler takes the snap, hands it off on an end around this time to Nick Womp, who tries to find the outside. Stiff arms his way, gets past the 20, past the 25, before going out of bounds just near the 30. And a couple of flags coming in as there were a couple of very late hits on Womp as he ran out of bounds. That was the theme of last week's game too. A lot of late hits in that game ended up being a very explosive result. And it's really been kind of a broken record defensively here for ITC. They just cannot seem to tackle anybody on the outside, whether it's a screen, pra screen pass or an end around like we just saw. They, uh, they are really, really struggling tackling at the second level. What would have already been pretty close to a first down is gonna get a little bit farther after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties coming on ITC on the late hits. And this ball is going to move up even further. And with a minute 34 left in this first half, up 28 to nothing, the Lakers are now on their own 40 with a chance to move towards the end zone. And it looks like, it looks like um, the Lakers are going to have a very, very good chance of putting up some points the way that Hackler has been able to throw the deep ball tonight. Working from the near hash this time, three receivers to the right side for Hackler. One receiver, Nate Wellington, to his left. His running back, Ari Boney, on his left hip. Ball snapped to Hackler, fakes the handoff to Boney. Looking to his left, high over the left of secondary, and Wellington snags it, runs down past the 20 into the red zone before being brought down at the 17-yard line of the Eagles. A minute 25 to go in this second quarter, and the Lakers just keep on rolling offensively. Couldn't draw that one up better. Wellington beat his man. The safety is late, and Hackler just through an effortless pass. That was beautiful. Nice little arc. Had the distance, fell right into Wellington's hands. Now on the Eagles 17 yard line, Skinny Atlas getting ready for another play. Exact same setup as the last one. Running back on the right hip, three receivers right. Hackler with a three step drop, looking to his right, short pass, just too short for Nick Womp. That one landing at about his feet. And with 121 to go in the second quarter, it'll be second and 10 from the 17. Very, very solid drive. Smooth sailing. When you've got an offense that can get 40 yards in about five seconds, not the two-minute drill is not too much of a concern. And now second and ten coming up. Pat Hackler again back at quarterback, of course. Craig Shearer, uh, Craig Shearer on the near side. Three receivers, Nate Wellington, Nick Womp, and Luke Vigiano to the right side. Ari Boney on Pat Hackler's right hip. And Hackler fakes the handoff, looking over the middle, finding Vigiano for the touchdown. 17 yards off the armor of Pat Hackler. And it's now 34 to nothing with still a minute and 17 to play in the first half. Very, very soft defense there from ITC. They were kind of just sitting back in that zone coverage. And <clears throat> that's been their scheme for most of this night. They've been kind of alternating between a press man coverage in that zone. And Hackler just, just kind of picked him apart right there. He was wide open down the middle. Pat Hackler doing everything tonight. How about three passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown? His passing touchdown total now up to 18 on the season. Absolutely incredible back there, manning the offense for Skinny Atlas. And Nick Womp on to kick the extra point, trying to match the total from last week's entire game here in just the first half of play. Snaps about level. Kick is up and kick is good. Right through the uprights, and it's now 35-0 Skinny Atlas. They are absolutely uncontested in this one, Michael. It looks like they're running against air right now on offense. They can really get whatever they want. The deep balls are coming effortlessly when they're throwing it into the flat. Nobody is really stepping up to make those tough tackles. And right now, things are an absolute dream here for Senior Night. And Senior Night gonna be, a looks like it's on pace for a big win already. And if you're ITC, what are you doing right now? What is your mindset for the rest of this contest? Do you think we just have to try to stay in this as we go into the second half or try to develop a little bit more? Try to see what works and what doesn't and what you can carry into the schedule for the rest of the season. When you're a team that's struggling like this, I think you need to keep getting that quarterback some reps and you don't want to put him in with backups because he's just going to get killed at that point. If you're ITC, you need to pick something on defense. They're trying to have it both ways. Because right now they're sitting back in the coverage and letting they're either going to sit back in coverage and let R.I. Boney run all over them. But when they're sitting back in coverage, Hackler's still picking them apart. They've got to try to put some pressure on him and try to force him into some mistakes like Bishop Ludden was able to do in the first half last week. Because right now they're playing, they're selling out against the pass, but they can't even really stop that. 
And now Skinny Atlas getting set to kick off from right to left after taking a 35-0 lead on the 17-yard passing touchdown from Pat Hackler there to Luke Vigiano. As always, Richard Alexander and J.P. Chuitongi back to receive for ITC. And once again, Nick Wamp to kick for the Lakers. This one going from the far hash, going from right to left. Only a minute and 17 seconds left in this first half of play. And the Eagles with one more chance seemingly to find the board. Kick coming from Nick Womp. It's another roller. It's going to go deep, though. It's going to get fielded by Chewy Tongi inside his own 15-yard line. Runs past the 15, goes towards the middle, sheds a few tackles, but gets brought down just past the 20. Gets met by a few gunners for the Lakers. And that's a very short pickup of about five or six yards on that return. And the Eagles now have a minute and 10 to work with to end this first half. And um, if they want to try to score the ball in a minute and 10, they're going to have to abandon those I formation dives. If they, I personally, this may be an unpopular opinion. This may seem a little crazy. I actually liked what I saw from Ratchford in that deep ball in the first half. Or I mean in the first quarter, rather. I think if they, if they open up that playbook, I think Ratchford has a chance. The way Skinny Atlas has been playing defense with that off coverage, he's got a chance to make a play or two if they kind of open up that playbook. Working from the far hash, it'll be first and 10 from the Eagles' 22-yard line. Returning to the I formation here, ITC gets set. Ratchford takes the snap, and he pitches it back to Chewy Tongi, running to the left side. He brought down for a gain of about four yards. Nice run there by Chewy Tongi. Gets the offense moving, but now less than a minute to go. The clock is still running. That's a great call. From the, from the ITC staff, really the only offensive plays, at least in the run game, where they've been able to really consistently get good yardage is those outside runs and is those wide receiver handoffs. They don't really have the time to run plays like that, but it's a good way to start a drive and kind of get your confidence going a bit. 40 seconds left to go in the first half. Lakers leading 35 to nothing. Second and four for the Eagles on their own 28. Again, returning to the I formation, Tavon Ratchford under center. Leonir Nakuri in motion. Ratchford takes the snap, pitches it back to Alexander, spins around a couple defenders, gets a first down and then some. He's brought down just past the 40, and a nice pickup there by the Eagles' offense to get the ball moving, and only 19 and a half seconds to go in this first half, but now better field position here for ITC. Something to note looking forward in this game, uh, it looks like the referees kind of swallowed their whistles in that play. They were two in my opinion, pretty obvious blocking in the back plays, especially one after the whistle there, and um, referees did not throw the flags. Clock stopped to move the chains, and now eight seconds to go in this first half. Running the eye formation again, it looks like they're not going to go for the end zone here, as that one's going to get handed off over to Alexander. He gets swallowed behind a line of scrimmage, and that will end the first half of football here at Arthur W. Hyatt Stadium. Skinny Atlas killing the game on senior night. They lead 35 to nothing. After one half of play, you're listening to Skinny Atlas Lakers football on CNY Stream.
One half of play done here at Arthur W. Hyatt Stadium in Skinny Atlas, New York, and the Lakers have a commanding 35 to nothing lead over the ITC Eagles. Again, he's Michael Fernari. I'm Brandon Ross. And now, quick recap. What happens? It really was all Skinny Atlas in that half. Unlike last week and some of the weeks prior, they came out to a fast start. 35 points in one half, and it really felt effortless. No punts from Skinny Atlas. They just marched right down the field, and they had Pat, ha Pat Hackler finishing most of those drives. And now Pat Hackler obviously winning the day so far. Three touchdowns through the air. Another one on the ground. That fifth touchdown coming off a nice 37-yard run by Ari Boney. And Ari Boney also himself is doing a lot of the work here tonight for the Lakers offense. As usual, whenever they're starting off those drives, they just hand in the ball a couple times, and it really helps them establish that momentum. And it really helps keep the defense honest so they can't sell out to stop Pat Hackler. And now coming into this second half of plays, we're going to get started in about five or ten minutes or so. Are you expecting more of the same, or do you think ITC might come out and try to fight, put up a little bit more of a fight this time? You know, I'm rooting for ITC to get to put the ball back in Ratchford's hands and kind of let him make some plays. It's not fun to just watch the team run dive play after dive play, especially when they're not having too much success. To me, the key is... Will they be able to kind of give that young quarterback the reins? Will they be able to open up that playbook and let him play out there? Michael, as always, great insight. Second half of football here in Skinny Atlas, almost ready to start. And when we come back, that's what will happen. Skinny Atlas will start with the ball here on CNY Stream.
Ouais, na... Second half of football getting underway here at Arthur W. Hyatt Stadium. Skinny Atlas leading 35 to nothing over ITC. Once again, alongside Michael Fernari, I'm Brandon Ross. ITC getting ready to kick this one off from left to right. Nick Womp and Nate Wellington back to kick return for the Lakers. It's the first kick return of the entire game as they kicked off to start the first half and never found themselves in a position. Didn't give up any single points. So they never had to kick return until just now. And ITC getting ready to kick off from their own 40 from left to right. We've seen Wellington not in the returner role so far. It's been Womp since it's been only punt returns so far for the Lakers. Very rough start in this game, if you could call it one, from ITC. We'll see if they can kind of um, avoid that big donut hole at the end of this game and kind of get some momentum going and you know, try to find a little more confidence heading into the next week because so far, things have been pretty barren for them on offense. Leonair Nakuri back to kick it here for the Eagles. Once again, two men back to receive this kick. Nick Wamp and Nate Wellington for Skinny Atlas. Refs whistle the play in, and we're underway to start this second half in Skinny Atlas. Nakuri with a short kick. Going to roll a little bit. Gets past Wellington. He's going to field that one inside the 20. And Ryan what, pass, just back out. He cuts outside to the 25. And he's brought down just beyond that line. Actually just past the 20. He fielded that inside the 15. Picks up about 5 on that return. And the Lakers will start from their own 22. Skinny Atlas got a bit of a lucky bounce on that one. The way that was fielded and the way that was kind of bobbled in the, in the um, back at, the, at around the 10. That could have been an absolute disaster, but luckily it bounced right back into the hands of the return man instead of kind of giving him a little more further trouble on that one. Skinny Atlas already with a five touchdown lead after one half of play. Starting off the second half from their 22. First and 10 coming up. Pat Hackler still in the ball game. All starters still out on the field for Skinny Atlas. Same with ITC. Hackler in the shotgun. Two receivers to each side. Ari Boney with him in the backfield. Nick Womp goes in motion from right to left. Hackler takes the snap, rolls to his left. Quick dump off to Nick Womp in the sideline. And he slips just past the 20. Picks up about a yard or two there. And if he didn't slip, that could have been a big pickup. But instead, it's going to be second and eight or nine. And that, that's, the, that's the kind of play that has worked all night for Skinny Atlas. They've been able to find room in the flat really throughout that first half. And after the catches have been made, they've done a really great job of breaking through arm tackles. And that looked like to be like looked like there was going to be another one of those very easy plays for Skinny Atlas. Second and nine from the 23, working from the near hash. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near. Ari Boney with Hackler in the backfield. Hackler in the shotgun. Hackler takes the snap, hands it off up the middle to Boney, who gets past the first level, but he's brought down as he gets to the linebackers. A pick of about three yards. And a third down and medium, a situation we haven't seen a lot from Skinny Atlas as they've had a lot of success moving the football so far. Shows the kind of day Boney's had. That was only about a three-yard pickup, and that is far and away his shortest run of the night. Third and six coming up from the Lakers' 26-yard line. Ari Boney might get this one again, or it could be one of the four receivers out for the Lakers. Hackler in the shotgun, Boney to his right side. Hackler three-step drop, looking to his right. Zips it downfield, looking for Nick Womp. And he finds him over the defender. Nick Womp hauls that in and around the 45-yard line. A big-time pickup there for the Lakers, and they're in Eagles territory. That was an unbelievable play by Nick Womp. Excellent awareness, excellent job finding the ball, because Hackler actually underthrew that pass. Uh, Womp had a pretty solid step on the receiver, and Hackler probably could have left it out there by another two or three yards. But Womp made a great play, found the ball, and he just jumped right up there and snagged it. And the Lakers getting set up once again after the catch by the All-State second teamer, Nick Womp. Hackler in the shotgun takes the snap, rolling to his left once again. Darts it over to the left side, and it's caught on a slide there on the near sideline. That catch coming from Nate Wellington. Solid pickup there. It'll be second and about three yards with 10 minutes left to go in this third quarter of play. The Lakers already out in front 35 to nothing and moving quickly to the chance for another score here. 
it's senior night and they've got those players out there and we'll see how long they stay out because right now they are really, really impressing. Two receivers to each side, Hackler in the shotgun again, Boney to his right side. Tight man coverage here from the defense. Hackler takes the snap, three jump drops, looks over the middle, fouls it complete to Vigiano. Gets it inside the five yard line. A 31 or 32 yard pass completion there from Hackler. And the Lakers are pounding on the door to the end zone. And really, this is that's the opposite of what you want if you're the ITC coaching staff. They're only rushing four, and they're just dropping everybody back in the zone coverage to try to stop Hackler. But then they've really got nobody back there making plays on the ball. They're dropping people back, but they still are getting absolutely carved up. Two receivers to each side once again. The Lakers banging on the door to the end zone. 9.20 to go in the third quarter of play. The chance to make it 42 to nothing with another touchdown. Hackler takes a snap, hands it off up the middle. Boney runs it in. Four yards for the touchdown. Absolutely effortless right there. Strolled right in. And as we mentioned earlier, they're dropping back into zone coverage, and it's really giving the, the linebackers just don't have a chance to make a play at the point of attack there because they're too busy dropping back before they've by the time they've realized that it's a run coming. 41 nothing after the touchdown. Nick Womp staying on to kick the extra point. Pat Hackler as always out to hold. Snap goes right into the hands of Hackler, puts it down, and Womp puts it through the uprights, and it's 42 nothing after the Lakers get another touchdown here. Second rushing touchdown of the day for Ari Boney. And the offense just keeps piling on here. They really can't be stopped here by ITC. Absolute, cl absolute clinic so far from Skinny Atlas. The receivers are making plays. Hackler's making plays. And you just can't draw this up any better. You know, the coaches, they draw their plays. You try to scheme your people into the right positions. But ultimately, when you've got guys like Hackler throwing the ball, you've got receivers like Womp stepping up to make great catches. And you've got a machine like R.A. Boney breaking tackles, it's pretty easy to have a great offense when you've got players like that out there kind of putting out their best. And another little underrated player tonight, Nick Womp. He hasn't been on the stat sheet much. He had that catch on the nearest sideline to get the Lakers into Eagles territory. What, how do you see that catch unfolding on the near sideline? He really did a great job. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage. Again, Props to ITC on that play because they really did have very, very solid coverage. Hackler actually kind of underthrew the ball a little bit, but Womp came back. He found the ball here at this here at this um, field. The lights are doing him justice because he found it. He made the play and he just stepped right up and he actually body caught it. He didn't even really need to stretch all the way out for it, um, but he made an outstanding play on a pass that probably could have gone either way. And now the Lakers out to kick this one off from the far hash on their own 40, going from right to left. It's JP, Chewy Tongi, and Shamik Williams back to return this one for the Eagles. It's Pat Hackler booting this one this time. Chewy Tongi takes it at his own 17-yard line, takes it past the 20, past the 25, over past the 30, cutting out the middle, spins around a couple defenders, and he gets out past the 40 before finally being brought down. What a return there, almost 30 yards on that return from J.P. Chewy Tongi to get the ball almost to midfield. Really tenacious stuff. There wasn't a whole lot of blocking there, but he really made it happen. He's, he's making moves, he's making people miss, and then after contact, he's still keeping those legs moving. He's been easily their best playmaker on offense tonight. Chewy Tongi, like you said, the big playmaker. Richard Alexander getting in on some action as well. And now, like the end of the last half, they're returning to the eye formation. Ratchford under center. And he takes the snap and pitches it back to Richard Alexander. Tries to find the outside, but he's brought down for a gain of about one or two. And it'll be a second and about nine up from the 42-yard line. That's kind of a tough one for them to win on. When you've got the box stacked as heavily as Skinny Atlas does, that kind of play, it's so easy for the secondary to kind of get out and get to the outside when they know they don't really have too many pass responsibilities. And um, the guards just aren't getting out fast enough to try to get the blocking downfield. And when your guards aren't getting to the second level, it's very difficult to get more than two or three yards. 8.30 to go in the third quarter. The Lakers leading 42 nothing, and the Eagles just trying to get on the scoreboard. They are at a second and eight from their own 43. Ratchford with no running backs behind him. It might be a little bit of trickery here. You might see a couple end arounds, and it is. An end around attempt here to J.P. Chuitongi, but he's brought down by John Danforth, well behind the line of scrimmage. Flag there at the end of the play. So that might be to the benefit of ITC, but John Danforth just absolutely swallowed up Chuitongi back there. 
Kind of a predictable call. When you've got that set, it doesn't seem like they're going to pass out of that one, at least not from the I formation. They haven't really passed out of that set all night. And um, it seems kind of obvious that they're going to run that play. And it took a little bit too long to develop as well. When you get a predictable call, when the blocking takes a little too long to set up, it's really easy for an athletic team like Skinny Atlas to just get to, to kind of penetrate past the line of scrimmage. It was an interesting formation there. Ratchford was under center. He had no running backs behind him. And it looks like it's going to be a face mask on Danforth as he was making that tackle. So that's not really what they wanted. It'll probably still be a second down after that takedown because that was well behind the line of scrimmage. But still, Danforth really swallowed that up. And it looks like that is an automatic first down. The ball is going to be placed at the 49-yard line of Skinny Atlas. Eagles with a first and 10. Kind of an underrated aspect of the game so far. Skinny Atlas has had a lot of penalties. Doesn't show on the scoreboard, but they've been a little bit, a little undisciplined tonight. Could hurt them come playoff time. I formation here for ITC. Ratchford takes the snap, hands it off right up the middle to the fullback, and who brings it for a gain of about two or three before being brought down. A second down, about eight or nine coming up after that short pickup there from what looked like it was Albert Scipio. No, it looks like it was Anthony King on that one. I actually kind of like the call there from the coaching staff because when you're running a lot of dive plays, when you're running a lot of runs, at least at least let the play develop a little quicker, and that's what you do when you have a fullback dive. Not a bad call. A lot of fullbacks on this ITC roster hey, have not been utilized a lot tonight. And now Ratchford returning to the shotgun with a running back on his left hip. Uh, two receivers to the left side, one to the right. High snap, Ratchford corrals it. Zips it to the right side, incomplete. That's a great throw Wellington going to get flagged for a very late hit there and writhing on the ground now after that hit. Raekwon Pride struggling to get up. He has got up and he's walking off the field under his own power, but it looks like he was a little shaken up after that one. And that was a great throw by Ratchford. I actually, again, um, a situation we sometimes find ourselves in with high school football teams where the quarterbacks can struggle a little bit is it becomes a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy because you don't let them throw the whole game and then when you, get the, when you let them throw, it's third and 16. And then that's a very tough position for a quarterback to succeed in. If you let Ratchford throw early on in the downs, they've had some success with that tonight. That one is an unnecessary roughness call there on Nate Wellington. The first hit broke up the play, and as Raekwon Pride was stumbling afterwards, Wellington came in and hit him from behind. An unnecessary play, and again, these penalties are not going to hurt you against a team like ITC, but come playoff time, that could really hurt you. That's possible. That was that was very solid pass defense. <clears throat> Skinny Atlas was in position on that one, but actually, Ratchford really kind of um, really that was a, that was a dot from Ratchford. Perfect position on the ball there. And now Tavon Ratchford working out of the shotgun once again. It looks like they're going to be running a wing T here. This is a rather unusual formation that not a lot of teams get to run. And a timeout is called by the Eagles. We've seen, we've seen the wishbone today. We've seen the single, seen the si single back. We've seen the I formation. And now we're getting the wing T. Frankly, I actually think it's very possible somebody lined up in the wrong spot on that play. That's why we got the wing T. Because as soon as they set at the line of scrimmage, the coach ran on the field and called a timeout. It's possible, but, I mean, we've seen it. Look, it was the, a receiver. It was Leonor Nakuri lined up near the offensive line. We saw him on the first play of this drive lined up in the same spot. So I'm not sure if it was a mistake or maybe there was a miscommunication, but that was definitely the wing T. They were setting up to run there, whether it was intentional or accidental. And we've seen so many different sets here from ITC. Are they just experimenting, trying to see what works? I think that's very possible. And... Um Frankly, I think I think what works is is has been on the field. They've seen success with the quick slant. They've seen success with these little hitch patterns. Ratchford has really actually done a very good job of being accurate on those throws inside about seven yards. He's thrown some strikes, and I think they should they should just try to let him experiment here in this quarter. You know, there's nothing at stake in this game right now for them with the time that's remaining. Let your quarterback build a little bit of confidence. Seven oh six to go in this third quarter. The Eagles are down forty two to nothing, and. Just like expected, they line up in the wing T. Raekwon Pride, the wing back, and now a handoff here to Richard Alexander, who's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Ari right, Boney laying out on that tackle. It'll be a loss of about one or two, and it'll be second and long here for the Eagles. Textbook play by Ari right, Boney. 
Perfect, line, perfect play by the linebacker there. He sniffed that one right out. He filled the hole, and he made a perfect form tackle. That's what you want from your star player. Star player getting a lot done on both sides of the ball tonight. A lot of help from a lot of other players on the defensive side. Now a second and 11 coming up for the Eagles. 6.30 to go in this third quarter. 42-0 lead for Skinny Atlas. Once again in the wing tee. Raekwon Pride is the wing back. Ratchford hands it off to Alexander going to the right side. He gets about two or three yards before getting brought down just shy of the 30. He's brought down out of bounds. It'll be a third and long coming up here for the Eagles. Again, that's, they've kind of seen a little bit more success with those outside runs, and that's what we saw in that play, kind of running around the tackles. But unfortunately, this, this Skinny Atlas defense is just too fast at the second level. They do a very, very good job of getting downfield and getting in a position to make those plays, especially when the blockers aren't doing a great job of getting to the second level. Looks like they're not going to mark him for any gain on that play. Alexander can't move the offense any more forward, so third and 11 coming up for ITC. They're trailing by 42 points. Haven't found the scoreboard yet today, and there's only 5.35 to go in the third quarter. Ratchford takes the snap, hands it off to the outside to Alexander on the left side, and Ari Boney, solo tackle, absolutely brutalizes him behind the line of scrimmage. And a fourth and long coming up, and a skinny Atlas Lakers player down near the 30. Looks like he gets to his feet, so all's good there, but... A fourth and long coming up here for ITC, and it seems like they're going to go for it. Kind of a strange call. Down third and 11, they just ran kind of a standard off-tackle sweep play. They didn't pull anyone. Um, and it, it just is one of those plays where if you don't have blockers coming downfield, how do you expect to get, to get past the skinny Atlas linebackers in that kind of play? Fourth and 13 from the Skinny Atlas 35-yard line. ITC trying to get the ball moving with 4.48 to go in this third quarter. Ratchford takes the snap, throwing deep to the left side. Tight coverage there on the far sideline by Cody Nesbitt. It goes incomplete, and the ball gets turned over to the Lakers after a momentous offensive drive brought the Eagles into Skinny Atlas territory, but they couldn't get any closer than the 35. Call me crazy. I actually thought that was a gorgeous ball from Ratchford. Um, I think, frankly, that could have been called his defensive holding right there. Uh, you saw the receivers getting kind of tangled up about 10 yards downfield, and that kind of prevented the receiver from getting quite to the, to the route he was supposed to be on. Uh, the receiver's got to do a better job of kind of getting into position to make that play. But I don't put the blame on Ratchford for that one. That was a good throw. Like you said, could have been a defensive holding there. You see a lot of high school football. There's a lot of just not inc incapability of the referees, but just they miss a few more things. And it looks like James Musso is finally coming out to take over the offense for Skinny Atlas. He comes out to replace Pat Hackler. And the 5'9", 160-pound freshman matches inch for inch, pound for pound for Tavon Ratchford on the other side. And he takes over the offense, and Jack Comer in at running back to his left. Musso takes it now, hands it off to Comer. A broken play. He gets it about back to the line of scrimmage. Might be marked down for a loss of a yard. And at 6'2", Comer is very, very large for a guy who's going to be taking the ball out of the backfield. What's, it's going to be interesting to see how ITC's defense matches up against Coomer, especially when they've had so much trouble with tackling tonight. We'll see if they can really do anything to contain him. Just a sophomore, that big boy Jack Comer gets a lot done on both sides of the football. Primarily a defensive player, but now stepping in on offense. He's at the left hip of James Musso. He rolls to his left after the snap. Quick dump off pass to Luke Vigiano. He's out near the 40, and he picks up about six yards there. And it'll be a third and four from the 41-yard line. And with 3.56 to go in this third quarter of play, the offense is still moving, even without Pat Hackler on the field. Yeah, it's, it's really a testament to the coaching staff and to the work they put in here. They, the thing you could say about Skinny Atlas, they've had some penalties tonight, but they do a great job of executing. Only a few substitutions so far. Nesbitt is in at wide receiver, and as we've mentioned, James Musso at quarterback and Jack Comer in at running back. Wellington goes in motion. Musso rolls to his right. A quick pass here to Wellington. He gets the first and then some. Out past the 50, and he runs out of bounds at about the 48-yard line of ITC. And the chains keep moving. It's a first down for Skinny Atlas. ITC's coaching staff needs to adjust right now. The whole game, they've been dropping back into cover two and cover three because they're scared of Pat Hackler's deep ball. But Pat, Pat Hackler isn't in the game right now. They've been leaving the flats open because of that deep ball, and they're still leaving it open. They haven't really adjusted to him being out of the game. 42 to nothing. Skinny Atlas leads. 3.24 to go in the third quarter. 
Musso takes the snap. Quick dump off to the left side to Jack Comer. He runs it past, past the 40, a first down and then some, and he's brought down just shy of the 30-yard line. That was a direct screen pass just to the left side of James Musso, and Comer ends up picking up about 15 or 16 yards. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one of those plays where there's no trickery. There's, there's nothing there's nothing fancy at play. It's just we're just going to swing, not, not even really any blockers out there. You're just going to swing the ball to your six foot two running back, and you're going to dare somebody to tackle him, and that's what they did right there. Quick little water break there on the near sideline for Skinny Atlas, and they take the field once again. Three receivers to the far side this time, one to the near side. Musso moving the offense forward in his first drive as the fear general for this Lakers offense. He's in the shotgun with Jack Comer to his left. First in 10 from the Eagles, 32. Direct snap to, to Musso. It's handed off to Comer, and he can't even get it back out to the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a loss of about a half a yard, maybe a yard, and it'll be a second and long. Something you don't see too often here in Skinny Atlas is Skinny Atlas's offensive line losing at the point of attack, but they did right there. The defensive line for, for um, ITC actually did a great job of stepping up and filling some of those holes. Props to the defensive line on that play. That was all them. Second and 11 from the 33 yard line, 2.38 to go in this third quarter. Skinny Atlas already with a blowout, 42 to nothing lead. A chance to pad that even more here. Musso takes the shotgun snap, five step drop, looks to his left, trying for Nate Wellington and it's incomplete. Just short, looking for Wellington at about the 10-yard line. Coverage wasn't that tight, but the pass wasn't, wasn't hard enough, and that'll be a third and long coming up for the Lakers. Yeah, that was kind of a tough spot for Musso. Nobody was really wide open on that play, and he just didn't, he didn't seem like he kind of had the arm. He didn't really step into the throw as well either. Um, tough spot there. Um, clean pocket, but nonetheless, he just needed to get a little bit more arc on that ball and get a little bit more under it. Third down and 11 coming from the 33-yard line. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near. Jack Comer on the left tip of the quarterback, James Musso, in for Pat Hackler for the first time. Musso takes the snap, rolling to his left out near the sideline. He dishes it off, and it's incomplete. That one was too far out of bounds for Nate Wellington. It would not have been a first down anyway. And facing fourth and 11, we'll see what the Lakers end up doing here. That was an excellent, excellent play call on defense by ITC. They've got that inexperienced quarterback in there, and they bring the blitz. They've got a free rusher right up the, right up the uh, B gap, and <clears throat> they force Musso to get out of the pocket where he doesn't have that many receivers, roll to his left. Great call by the defense. And the Lakers are going to go for it. Fourth and 11 from the 33, 2.21 to go in the third quarter. Three receivers right, one left. Hack, rather, Musso takes the shotgun snap. Looking over the middle now for Wellington. Incomplete. Just off his fingertips. It's a little bit too much for him to handle. And ITC gets the ball back. Just a little bit little bit too high on the throw there from uh, Musso. Uh, very solid route. Very good play. That was, They had the seam up the middle. Unfortunately, Musso just left it a little bit high. And now ITC takes over at the 33 with 2.17 to go in the third quarter. And the defense really did a good job on that drive, taking advantage of the quarterback's inexperience. I thought ITC adjusted very well. They haven't really blitzed much all game, but they pulled it out there a little, little bit too late. But a, a good adjustment on the de on, by the defensive, co defensive coordinators for ITC. Tavon Ratchford back in at quarterback. Still in the wing T here. We saw this on the first time the last drive, and a quick flag coming out to start this one. And it looks like a warning's going to come to this Guinea Atlas sideline, just making sure they all stay in the box. So the ball will not move. Instead, the start of this drive is just delayed momentarily. Jack Comer was a little bit cl too close to the field of play, even though he was not active. And the referee just warning him to just stay in the box. First and 10 from the 33. Ratchford in the shotgun. Chuitongu, Chuitongu. Tuitongi in motion, he takes the end around handoff, tries to run to the outside, but he's swallowed behind a line of scrimmage for a loss of three or four. And that, that's the kind of play right there that shows just how good the Skinny Atlas team is. Uh, they didn't bring the blitz, they had three down linemen, and everybody just won at the point of attack. The linemen were able to shed blocks, and the corners stepped up to make tackles. And now second and 13 coming off after the three-yard loss on the carry by Tuitongi. And it'll be from their own 30. 146 to go in this third quarter. Skinny Atlas already with a 42 to nothing lead. They move back out of the wing tee and they're now back in the shotgun. 
Ratchford takes the snap with a running back to his right. Looks left for a quick pass. Incomplete. Trying to get separation there on the far side. Chewy Tongi couldn't get anything done as he just slipped trying to come back for that one. Excuse me, on that back on that comeback for N Nakuri. That didn't quite work out. Nope, excuse me. That was Xavier Saunders coming back for that one. Couldn't quite get to it. Just slipped coming out of it. <coughs> just slipped coming out of his break. And now a third and 13. Big opportunity here to try to get the ball into first down territory. And they're going back to the shotgun formation. Two receivers left, one right. Ratchford in the shotgun, takes the snap, fakes the handoff. Actually, it is a handoff to Richard Alexander, who runs it back up the middle into the second level. But he only picks up about four or five yards. But the ball comes out as the play's whistle dead. He was not yet on the ground, but he had stopped forward momentum, and the refs had whistled the play dead. Could have been a big opportunity for Skinny Atlas to get the ball back. Instead, it's a fourth down, and we'll see if they decide to punt. We see on that play just how talented a runner Alexander is. He's really got some skills, solid speed. He's very tall. He can break through those arm tackles, but unfortunately, he just really has not had too much blocking tonight. Basically, every play he's come free, he's had to make himself. And now Chewy Tongi on to punt for the Eagles with 55 seconds to go in the third quarter. You got a new man back there to return for the Lakers as Cody Nesbitt, it looks like, will get his chance. Chewy Tongi boots it end over end. Nesbitt to field it at his own 30. Just inside the 29, he runs it past the 30, out to the 35 before he's brought down by a pair of Eagles defenders. A solid pickup for the first chance for Nesbitt today, and it'll be good field position for the Lakers to start. We'll see how James Musso adjusts, and we'll see if ITC keeps putting that pressure on him. The pre he was kind of unable to deal with the pressure a little bit early on. He didn't know what to do. He rolled out to his left where he didn't really have any receivers running routes. We'll see if he can kind of get get um, come back from that shaky start and see if he can make some plays from the pocket. And the offense for Skinny Atlas still huddling on the sideline with head coach Joe Sindoni. And Musso will go out for his second drive as a signal caller for Skinny Atlas. He's going to head out there with a mostly new receiving course as no starters at the skill positions are left in the ball game. Three receivers right, one left. Musso in the shotgun with Jack Comer on his right hip. High snap, he corrals it, hands it off to Comer who finds the outside of the left tackle, but he's brought down for a very short gain, maybe one or two yards. And with only 20 seconds left, it looks like the clock will probably run out pretty soon in this third quarter. They're not going to have a lot of time to get another playoff. And Skinny Atlas heads to the sideline. Clock runs out on quarter number three here at Arthur W. Hyatt Stadium. The Lakers leading 42-0 over the ITC Eagles. You're listening to Skinny Atlas Lakers football on CNY Stream. Welcome back to Skinny Atlas Lakers football here on CMY Stream. Skinny Atlas leading 42-0 after three quarters of play. All the substitutes are out on offense as James Musso, the quarterback, working with a second and eight from his own 37. High snap over the head of Musso, and they're going to have to run back and jump on it. Jack Comer corrals it at the 15-yard line. And just have to do some quick head math, as that's going to be a third and 30 
coming up here for the Lakers offense. This is a test that Pat Hackler has had a couple of times, but James Musso really hasn't faced this level of a challenge. And that's the second um, second time in two weeks we've seen a snap go far over the quarterback's head. Hackler had to deal with that last week. Something the, something the uh, Skinny Atlas coaching staff probably has to clean up. And now James Musso, the signal caller, going from the shotgun on third and 30. Three receivers right, one to the left. And the Lakers now moving from left to right. Jack Comer on the right hip of Musso in the backfield. Another high snap, but this time Musso can control it. Zips it over the middle to Cody Nesbitt, who hauls it in. And he breaks a tackle and gets past the first down marker, past the 50, past the 40, past the 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Skinny Atlas. 85 yards, Musso to Nesbitt. First passing touchdown of James Musso's career. That was an absolute dot by Musso. He, he had a clean pocket. He stepped right into the throw. And you could that was an absolute perfect throw right over the middle, hit the receiver in stride. And that's the danger of playing that man coverage down the field, especially when your safeties are out of position, is that once you can make that deep catch, it's very difficult to catch up to that receiver. And that's what we saw in that play. Unbelievable play there from the Lakers offense. Musso showing off some skill early in this one on his second drive. He passes the challenge of third and 30 and ends up scoring. On to kick the extra point. Now Nick Wump for the Lakers. Quick snap here to Pat Hackler. He puts it down and Wump puts it through the uprights. And it's now 49 to nothing here in Skinny Atlas. 10.58 to go in this fourth and final quarter of play. Just wow. That, that was last impressive. play. James Musso really getting it done there. Yeah, no, it was it was interesting. At the end of that last drive, the coaching staff kind of pulled Musso aside. You, the, you, if you could see, they were kind of draping their arms over his shoulder, kind of talking into his ear. And he missed a lot of throws in that last drive. And then he wasted no time in this one. Waited till he actually, well, actually, I guess he did waste a little bit of time. He waited till third and 30. And then he uncorked an absolutely beautiful pass. Dare I say, one of the best passes we've seen all night. And that big freshman connection, first passing touchdown of James Musso's young career and first receiving touchdown of Cody Nesbitt's career. That was only his third reception at the high school level. His first two going for a total of 26 yards. He almost quadruples that with that one there. 85 yards on the pass from Musso to the house, backed up close to their own zone and skinny Atlas. Now getting ready to kick off this time. It'll be Pat Hackler to kick from left to right. And going back to return for the ITC Eagles, you have a couple of new faces out there. Shamik Williams is back there to return, but also a new player in Zavon Johnson back to return. Hackler raises his right hand as the ball will be kicked off from the near hash. Hackler comes in and kicks. High boot to the right side. Williams having to run all the way back close to his own end zone. And he fields that at his own one. And Hackler does the job himself. Brings him down inside the five-yard line. Pat Hackler is everywhere today. He kicks that and gets the tackle very close to the end zone there. That's something you don't see too often. But Pat Hackler is not your everyday quarterback. Very few teams play their quarterbacks on defense special teams, and even when Nick Womp is out there kicking, they put Pat Hackler out there to try to go sniff out those tackles. And considering the kickoff is maybe the most dangerous play in football, that's a very, very impressive, impressive play from Hackler, and kind of a reckless one from the coaching staff, but it worked out there. And sometimes you see kickers making tackles on damage control. Pat Hackler going on the offensive there, getting the tackle inside the five-yard line. And now the ITC Eagles backed up to their own four. First and 10 with 10.52 to go in this ball game. They trail 49 to nothing against Skinny Atlas right now. Down by 49 points. Looks like they're going back to the I formation. Ratchford under center. He takes the snap, hands it off to Richard Alexander, who looks up the middle and now bounces to the outside. Out near the left side, past the 20, past the 25, 30, 35, 40. He's got no one in front of him and only a couple men to beat behind him. Past the 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Richard Alexander. White DC finds play. the board on a 96-yard run from Richard Alexander. 
That was a great play, and what we saw there was we saw Skinny Atlas just get a little too over-aggressive. They had them against the shadow of their own end zone, and what happened there was they just they blitzed the wrong way, and then Alexander cut it back, and at that point, everybody had already committed. Every, basically, the entire Skinny Atlas defense had already hit the line of scrimmage, so as soon as Alexander cut that one back, he had nothing but daylight, and he had just enough speed to get all the way to the end zone. You hadn't seen a lot of successful counter plays from this ITC offense. They'd run it before, but not nearly with as much success. Absolutely not, and it took, it took a very, very wise cutback from Alexander on that play. Good vision. And it looks like they're going to go for two here as they're down 49-6 to six even after the touchdown. And not even Tavon Ratchford under center this time. It's a different player, J.P. Chewy Tungi. And he gets it into the end zone. Chewy Tongi takes the snap himself, runs it to the outside, takes it to the outside, and gets them the two-point conversion. 49 to 8 now, with 10:27 to go in this ball game. It's not a shutout this time, but still an absolute wrecking ball day for Skinny Atlas. Absolutely. Now, interestingly enough, um, ITC has outperformed the last person to come into Skinny, the last team rather to come into Skinny Atlas, Bishop Ludden. Bishop Ludden was beaten 35-0. to zero. They were not able to get anything going on offense. And Bishop Ludden actually beat ITC, so it's interesting that ITC was able to get on the board tonight. And now the other difference point here is this is almost the exact score of the game against the West Hill Warriors, who also handily defeated the ITC Eagles. That was a 49-6 contest between West Hill and Skinny Atlas. Skinny Atlas, again, dominating on their home turf. This is their last home game of the season. After this, they go on two road games, one to Salve, and another one to Cortland, and then we're in playoff mode. A very short regular season here in New York State, but everybody here is used to it, and everybody's excited for the long road to Syracuse. Absolutely, and Skinny Atlas is just like a team that's, that's ready for it. They've got all the talent. They've got the coaching staff. They've got the scheme. They are the kind of team that looks poised to make a big run. The defending champions in their old class, they've got the reigning player of the year. They are in a great position. And for only the second time tonight, the first time coming out of the half, Skinny Atlas is on the kick return. Two men back this time. It's Cody Nesbitt as well as one more man with him. Two men back to return. Boot comes in towards the left side. It's Vigiano with Cody Nesbitt, but Nesbitt to return from his own 15. Runs it across the field from the right side to the left, and he runs it past the 15, past the 20 and the 25, before he's brought down just short of the 30. And a good 10 or 15 yard pickup there for the freshman, and now a first and 10 coming from the 29. So a little bit in shock from that touchdown. I was surprised to see Skinny Atlas in the kick return formation. And now 10-19 to go in this third quarter. Skinny Atlas starting from their 29-yard line. They have a 49-8 cushion. And James Musso coming out for his third chance to lead the offense downfield. Last drive ended in absolute success. Backed up on third and 30 on his own 15. An 85-yard dot to Cody Nesbitt to get the Skinny Atlas Lakers on the board in the fourth quarter. And now three to the left, one to the right. This one a handoff. And it's immediately met at the line of scrimmage by the defense. Not a lot of room for Comer on that one. That wasn't Comer on the carry. That was Christian Pizzolio Miles on the carry there. Picks up about two and a second and eight coming up. Miles had a great game last week. He played very, very well. He's got a lot of speed, and more importantly, maybe he's got a lot of agility. He's really great at cutting back. Pizzolio Miles, five carries on 16 yards. 17 yards was his longest carry, but a series of short ones kept him from getting a lot done. And on the second and eight, brought down in the backfield, Christian Pizzolio Miles didn't have anywhere to go, and that'll be a loss of about four. Absolutely not, and it seems like ITC is kind of getting the hang of the Skinny Atlas offense right now. Um, they've been a little more predictable with these kind of basic shotgun runs, and we'll see. We'll see if Musa can bail them out again here on third and long. Third and 11 from the 28. Nine minutes to go in the ball game. Skinny Atlas already leading 49 to eight. Musso pitches it outside to Pizzolio Miles. Looking to find the outside corner, but he's brought down in the backfield. 
Xavier Saunders keeping him from getting anywhere and getting him for a loss of yardage. That's a very tough call right there. They kind of just left Pizzoleo Miles out there to dry. They didn't really put, they, the if they pulled blockers, I didn't see them because they were not nearly fast enough out of their breaks. And the linebackers and DBs just swarmed all over Pizzoleo Miles in that one. And just as a way to get their offense some experience, going for it on fourth and 15 from their own 24. They're up by 41. They can afford to do pretty much anything here with 8.19 to go in the ball game. Two receivers to each side. Christian Pizzolio, Miles to the right hip of the quarterback, James Musso. And a defensive lineman for the ITC Eagles jumps offside. That's certainly not what you want in this situation. Someone got a little bit too happy to jump off sides there. Looks like that was Reese Flanagan jumping a little bit and getting too anger. And so now it's fourth and 10 still. They're still going for it from the 29. 7.39 to go in the ball game. Musso takes the snap and it's a pooch punt. They've done this before with Pat Hackler and now they do it with this new quarterback. And then a running back goes up and downs it at the 39-yard line of ITC. They'll have good field position to start this next drive. And let's see if they're gonna if they're willing to get Ratchford the ball. I thought he's he's really been he's really been playing a lot better in the second half. And um, with seven minutes to go, let's see if they open up that playbook and try to get him a few easy completions. The last offensive drive for the ITC Eagles resulted in their first score of the game, a 96-yard run on a counter play from Richard Alexander, finally getting ITC some points, but they still have a long way to go, and this game's pretty much decided at this point. They're trailing by 41 with just over seven minutes left to play. And Tavon Ratchford going under center, eye formation, one receiver to each side, and of course, a full back and a half back behind him. He hands this one off again to Richard Alexander, who got the big run last time. He's looking for another one this time. Gets past the first down marker, past the 40 of Skinny Atlas. Got, finds the sideline, and he's brought down just inside the 25. Unbelievable offensive play. That pickup goes more than 30 yards for Richard Alexander. And that's the kind of play where you can tell that Skinny Atlas has its backups in because the linebackers are just getting absolutely lost on these run plays. They really have no idea where the ball's going and they're not stepping up to fill holes. When you've got that first unit in there, RA, guys like R.A. Boney are stepping up and getting into the gaps. We're not seeing that right now. And you've got Alexander running downfield with, with, with a head of steam right now. For the first time in a long time, the ITC Eagles have a red zone opportunity. They're on the 20-yard line, first in 10, with 6-10 left to go in this ballgame. Let's see if they can find the board once again. Going back to the I formation, Ratchford takes the snap, hands it off this time to Shamik Williams. He finds the outside, gets off tackle, gets past a few defenders, and he trots into the end zone. Touchdown, ITC. Shamik Williams showing a lot of speed on that play. He got to the outside very quickly, and he had just the speed to turn the corner. And once again, we are not seeing a very good showing from these backup linebackers. And Cody Nesbitt had the opportunity to get the tackle there on the outside, did not take a great angle, and Williams just ran right by him. And so now 49-14 to is the score, like last time. The Eagles planning to go for two. Clock also appears to be running, by the way. And once again, like last time on this position, it's JP Chuitongi to take it. He hands it off this time, and a run up the middle is good for Dewan Tigner. He carries it into the end zone, and it's now 49 to 26, 49 to 16. Someone a little, little bit of a cold hand situation on the scoreboard there. 51 to 14 reads the scoreboard. The score actually 49 to 16 after that touchdown and extra point. Absolutely. Very, very interesting showing there. After struggling to run the ball all night, they've really been able to get a little bit of momentum going on the ground. And Ratchford didn't even have to throw the ball on that play. He really just had to hand that one right off. And it went very, very well for that offense for ITC. First time it was Richard Alexander. He carried them a good way of the march towards the end zone on that last drive. And this, and on that last play, Shamik Williams getting the job done. Absolutely, that was a very, very good run. He showed a lot of speed, and he sh and he's um, 
the running backs really have actually done a great job all night. They've really ran hard. They've ran with purpose. The problem is that for most of the night against those skinny Atlas starters, there really was just no momentum for the blockers. Nobody was getting to that second level. And now they're executing much better. And now with a 49 to 16 lead, that one getting cut down after the touchdown by the Eagles. ITC set to kick it off from right to left. Christian Pazzolio, Miles, and Luke Vigiano back to return. This kick going from the far hash. Nice boot there. And it's gonna be fielded at the 15 by Vigiano. He cuts it out to the outside over near the right sideline and he's brought down inside the 25 yard line. Gonna get marked down at the 24. A pick of about nine yards on that return. And less than five minutes to go here and Skinny Atlas with a 49-16 lead. They've been dominating all game. ITC got back into it and now they're just, they're just playing to run out the clock at this point, Skinny Atlas. Absolutely. We're going to see if, probably going to see the ball headed into the hands of Jack Comer and uh, Pizzoleo Miles. And we might see if this, if this backup quarterback has a little bit more in him. See if he can get one more down the field. 4.20 to go here. James Musso in the shotgun. Three receivers to the far sideline, one to the near side. Christian Pizzolio Miles on his right hip. Musso takes the snap, looks right. Quick pass over, incomplete intended for number 19, Zach Sears. He has no reception of the season. That would have been his first. Instead, he's going to have to wait as he's lit up by the defensive back, Xavier Saunders. And unfortunately for him, that was one of those plays where you can tell a backup receiver is in. He kind of just waited for the ball to come to him. That kind of play, you gotta, you got to attack the pass, and you got to step up and you know, kind of come, come to the ball on that one. Second down and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Clock running down, 3.39 to go in this contest. Same setup as last time. Three left, one right. Running back to the right hip of the quarterback, James Musso, who's in the shotgun. Musso eats the snap, hands it off to Pizzolio Miles, gets off tackle on the left side, and he runs to the line of scrimmage but can't get any further as he's met by the defensive line and can't get any yardage. So it'll be a third and 10 coming up for Skinny Atlas. And to try to establish some stakes here, if anybody's counting at home, the, um, skinny, the skinny Atlas bench is currently losing to ITC. They're down seven to 16 in, in the um, kind of the backup bowl here. And we'll see if they can get a little more momentum. But the overall score, 49 to 16 Skinny Atlas leads. Less than three minutes to go now in this ball game. Working from the far hash, third and 10. Three receivers to the right side after one goes in motion. Musso pitches it to the outside to Basilio Miles. He's running to the right side. He gets past the 25, and again, no gain on that play. Basilio Miles met by a few defenders, led by number six, Raekwon Pride, or rather, Leonair Nakuri, and again, fourth down. Yeah, this is, this is, that, that was kind of a tough drive, and we've seen it all night here with the, or not all night, but we've seen it here in the fourth with these backups, is that the backup linemen just really are not doing a great job winning at the point of attack. And right now, those ITC starters are doing a great job winning at the line of scrimmage. 2-12 to go in the ball game. They're going to go for it on fourth and 10 as a learning experience. Three receivers bunched up to the right side, one alone on the left side. And this one, another pooch punt here for the Lakers. This one gets past the return man, and it's fielded inside the 35, and he falls down. That one trying to get returned by Tavon Ratchford, who was on to return that punt, but couldn't get any momentum, and he in fact slipped on the return, so it'll be Eagles ball on their own. Looks like it'll be placed at about the 30-yard the line. I don't mean to question the coaching staff here, but I have never once seen a starting quarterback returning a punt down 33 points with a minute to go in a game. 90 seconds to go in the ball game, and ITC basically on just to see what can happen of this. 49 to 6, Skinny Atlas leads, and it's just been their night all night. Absolutely. Starters really have dominated. We've seen the backup slip up a little bit. I formation here. Ratchford under center, 69 seconds to go. Ratchford takes the snap, hands it off to the halfback, who's immediately swallowed up. Shamik Williams can't get anywhere there. Possibly a gain of one or two, but nothing more. Williams on the carry. About 50 seconds to go here in this contest. 
Looks like ITC will get another playoff, maybe one or two. A couple of new players coming in just to get some reps. This will probably be the last play of the ball game. Coming here, it's a second and nine from the Eagles' own 31-yard line. They're again in the I formation, a receiver to each side. Ratchford takes the snap, hands it off up the middle. Shamik Williams picks up maybe a yard, maybe two, and that will probably do it for this ball game as the clock will run closer to zero. And with 15 seconds left in this ball game, this game was all skinny Atlas all the time. ITC got a couple of touchdowns late, but it was never enough to do much. Looks like they'll try to win one more play with six seconds left on the clock. Again, lining up in the eye. Ratchford takes the snap off in time. He pitches it to the outside. Dishamik Williams runs off tackle, gets past the 40. Gets a first down and then some. Past the 40 of City Atlas now. A spin move, and he's brought down at the 30. Nice play to end the game, but the game is over now. Final score, Skinny Atlas takes down the ITC Eagles 49-16. The Eagles get two touchdowns, but both of them are in junk time. And Skinny Atlas with a commanding win over the visiting Eagles. Absolutely. Pat Hackler played a great game. <clears throat> one of those games for Pat Hackler where I can probably count on two hands the amount of times he had a drop back to pass today, but it seemed like every time he had that ball in his hands, he was throwing a strike, and he wasn't just throwing little checkdowns either. He was hitting guys 30, 40 yards down the field, over the middle, into the end zone, toss-up balls, you name it. Pat Hackler threw it today, and he was on the money. Three ha Pat Hackler, three touchdowns through the air, another one on the ground, a fantastic day for the senior We'll be heading to Yale lacrosse last year. Also, his final regular season game here at Arthur W. Hyatt Stadium. Certainly an emotional senior night for these players as they get a commanding win over the visiting Eagles. Very, very impressive game from Skinny Atlas. And although ITC did not do much in this game, you've got to at least be happy with those touchdowns they scored at the end of the game. 96-yard run, not something you see too often. And once again, final score here from Arthur W. Hyatt Stadium. Skinny Atlas takes down IT Syracuse Central 49-16. to Thank you for joining us here on Citrus, rather CNY Stream. Have a good night, everybody.